This three-plus-year-old podcast contains opinions, criticisms, and viewpoints that I could better explain now, don't agree with, or just don't possess anymore. I understand that these are not quality art. If I could do them again today, I would do them significantly better. I wanted to upload these here with that transparency. I cannot express how the other post feels about this. Welcome to Media XP. Wait, you want me to explain the show again? Probably. How well, maybe. we did do it last time. Well, think about how much this... Look at think about Let me finish! <laughs> well, you see... <laughs> you fucking, you, no, it's okay. Calm down. Do it. Do it for you. Well, think about it. We're going to have a lot of people come in and say, well, somebody's doing Bioshock? Listen, uh, you didn't even let me finish my thing. Okay. I said... We did do it last time, but let's do it again, just to be safe. Instead, you tried stabbing me. I'll stab you. I'll stab you. Edward Penis. That's the thing. I found out that there's a full house porn called yeah. Full Holes. No, there's... Yeah, Full Holes <laughs> that, that just came out for uh, by Pornhub. Oh, no. The Full Pornhub actually funded one, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat, guy. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, a welcome to me, XP, where, uh, me. I know, wow, it's, no, it's good. Welcome we're not me. starting over, we're just fucking fucking up, I guess. It was not fucking up, we just end up, keep going, <laughs> whatever the fuck we're talking about. Oh, oh my god. Oh no. I'll stop laughing near the mic, I'm sorry. Wow, you're like, I'm not quite sure our, our audience I'm likes not quite hear. sure. Oh my god. I'm gonna stop. Stop. I'm gonna stop. Stop it. Oh man, there's probably murder on people's ears. Well, this is where me, uh, Adern Gonger, or Noah, uh, team up with Capricola, or N Calvin, and we uh, we play things that we're not usually uh, meant to play, or, well, do, or see, or watch, or right. something, or read, or, or fuck. See, uh, Media XP stands for Media Experience! Therefore, we're supposed to encapsulate the. the, the the experience of actually doing it for the first time. And it's all about first times, isn't it? <laughs> you just went from like a high 10 to like a 4. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, and that's when we uh, do the thing. That's when we do the thing, yeah. Wow. You sound like poison. Well, like, the thing is, is Calvin, Calvin's sitting here like, yo, 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 I've seen like seven things in my life, but I've played every video game. Well, that is for certain. I play a lot of videos. <laughs> I have seen a lot of movies. There's just some, like some of the really popular ones I haven't. Like when I was a kid. Oh, but you made sure to watch Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, just because it happens to be here. <laughs> Me and my mom watch Mean Girls like all the. Did I ever tell you about the times where we're just sitting in our kitchen and we're just sitting back and forth and we're beside <laughs> Mean Girls and um, Legally Blonde to each other? Just. To be, honest, to be fair and honest, those are both good movies. I mean, like, my mom will be uh, just sitting there and she'll be like, Don't stomp your last season product is me, Ori. And I was like, oh, Last season? <gasps> Wait! <laughs> Warner, he's gay! What? Who? And what's the name of your boyfriend? <laughs> uh, Chuck. <gasps> Case closed, Honor. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no more, no, no more, more questions, questions, Your Honor. No further questions, yeah. Your Honor. No, it's good. <gasps> no, and then me, I've, I've watched so much stuff and played so many games over these years that I soon became a hipster pretty quick as I started hating everything. It's like, wow, this is bland, this is dumb, this is fucking stupid. That's what happens when you watch too much media, kids, so do it. Yep. Do it so you can lose joy in mundane shit and actually have a filter for good shit. Did you read that article that came out recently that was like, um, the creator of Idiocracy? Yes. Yes. I didn't know you actually like, watched that. It's yeah. a good movie. I know. I can love it. Yeah. Yes, I have seen it. We have two options for our future. Demolition Man, or Idiocracy. That's it. Neat. Wait, what happened? To Let's see. This is the part. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to the namesake of the show, everyone. Welcome to the name dropping uh, podcast. <laughs> we name drop everything. So, so that's good. What, what's so I was hanging out with Terry Crews. 
and we were talking about <laughs> Ronda Rousey. Ah, see, trending name. What about? And then Seth Rogen was around, and he was like, Don't. Aha, aha. <laughs> I got. <laughs> I can't do slap. <laughs> <laughs> And then he was like, yo, you should meet my favorite person, Amy Schumer. And I'm like, oh, okay. No. The one who was caught stealing jokes? No shit. Um, I got in an argument with somebody at work that I was working with that I said I didn't like Seth Rogen. <laughs> and they're like, why? I'm like, because he say, plays the same guy in every movie. As a comedian, like as his jokes, you know, I think it's pretty funny, like, it, you know, if that's it. Because, you know, usually an actor who does, a comedic actor does have influence on the script. Usually. Or, or a big enough role, or actor um, does have influence on the script. But, like, I think he's kind of funny at times. Like, he, like, he's like, he's like the guy you just bring to the party to be funny. As opposed to going up on a stage and being a stand-up comedian funny. Right. Like, stand-up yeah. comedian actually has jokes fucking guy at the party will make quips and make kind of rehashed right. or recycled jokes or re just yeah. jokes. See, the reason I don't like him is because... Oh, we forgot to introduce the other person. Oh. For people who don't know, there's John our editor. editor. Um, there's our editor, Johnny Desu. Uh, the cheek can say whatever he wants in this amount of time when I say penis. Or, you know, you know, you can just leave me hanging, whatever. Which you probably... Ew. Don't make the don't okay. I almost stop making noises just for the sake of making noises. That, yeah. Is that pretty bad? Is that pretty I don't bad? know, I didn't look. <clears throat> okay. No, no one awesome. would like that. Alright. Anyway, um because he always plays that person who's a loser and smokes weed in every single movie he's done. <clears throat> Coming from fucking what was it? What was the movie that was Not really the interview? Well, I didn't see that one either. I mean, like, but it doesn't really but show sure. him smoking weed. But right, you know. I'm like, he smokes weed in every. Single Wait, no, he does. Does. he does. He does. In every single movie he does, he's like, it doesn't. <laughs> and then just fucking. <laughs> I just imagine his laugh now is like the opening for fucking Mario Brothers Two. <laughs> <laughs> And that, uh, I can't stand his laugh either sometimes. Sometimes it's okay, I think, and then other times I'm like, I think ah. family, game, family Guy made a good joke about him. Is like, their their joke about him. Is, it was a dumb fucking episode, but it happened to catch it on because it's waiting in a fucking waiting room. Mm -hmm. was, um, <clears throat> I've inserted you with the Re Seth Rogen gene, where everything you say is funny, even though it isn't funny. It's just because you talk... You talk real nice. And it was just like, and it, they actually put his voice, and he just like kind of laughs. He says, "Yeah, I agree with that." <laughs> and it was just like, I, I was sitting around people, and they were actually laughing. And I'm like, "Oh my god, oh my god." <laughs> okay, the true question is, what waiting room were you waiting in where that was on the TV? Doctor's office. <laughs> what time? Oh, I went in for a cold at like fucking like noon. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, now it's time to talk about fucking games. But a bum bum. Ah, speaking, uh, before we start, I now brain yeah. is now working on. By the time of this recording, he's still working on an intro for us. Really? Yeah. The only thing Ooh. I last got from him is that, well, the drum track's done. He did that in like a three minutes. I'm just like, this motherfucker. <clears throat> like he said he could shit out a fucking intro for us. He's like, <clears throat> as he should. I don't know if it'll have words or whatever. I said I'd like it to have words, but he's like, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> like, what? Here <laughs> goes. It's just going to be like, Faggots with titties, that's what Noah is. Done. <laughs> like, Done. don't even mention <laughs> Don't even mention me at all. And they're like, 
Okay, yeah. I understand the show completely. <laughs> and see, and then you become famous. I'm left in the dust. I cut myself. I end up working in a department. I become store. a solo artist, and then I <laughs> and then I go, oh man, I'm gonna marry the richest other man in fucking uh, music industry. I always knew you'd come back for me. You better work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you'll marry Kanye West. He has a lot of money. I don't think I could stand that much. I don't think I could stand him. I, I like. Didn't you hear? I yeah, know, I know. He's like. He called out Dead Mouse and fucking argued with him. That's pretty neat. No, I don't mean that about his money. Oh yeah, no, that happened a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I like. Four. I like. I like title. He's like, yo, I'm gonna release my new album on title. I was like. Who the fuck gives a shit about me? I think I don't think I've ever listened to a Kanye West song and thought, yeah, my time is clearly well spent. I don't know. I, I, I don't I'm not. I'm I've not. Ever... I'm not a fucking like really good person to be like. Mm, yes, this is fine taste music. I can tell what's awful. Not most pop, but <laughs> oh. um, but I just. I've never listened to a Kanye West and thought, man, that was a good amount of my time. So, I've never listened to Kanye West. I've heard Stronger, and I'm like, fuck you, I man. actually really just wanted to hear Daft Punk. I literally never heard of the guy until he interrupted Taylor Swift. So, what does that tell you? Did Stronger come up before that? Huh? Did yeah. Did Stronger come up before that? Yeah. I heard that, and I was like, oh man, because I hear it, and I'm like, yes, let's fucking do it. And then he's like, dad, 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 dad don't kill. I'm like, oh. But get out, Kanye! I want to listen to Daft Punk. I hate you. <laughs> so, well, should we delve into your assignment or my assignment? Although we didn't really talk about each other's news, but you know, whatever. Do we really have anything? I was dumb. What was your week? What was your two weeks? Um. Well, everyone is dead. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I, I worked and I was being dumb. Cool. Isn't that what we always do? We're yeah. just like, we work. I mean, like making that money. Other than that, I was like, pretty much stressing out to to kind of finish the game and doing other things. Right. Play play board games. I play board games. I play video games. I was there. <laughs> he was. It's true. A uh, big fat cooter. Oh. Okay. All right, yo. So, yours first, mine first. Oh no, people have to wait for fucking mine. Yours. Okay, do you want to go into the synopsis or would you like me to do it? Well, if you think you can accurately do it. Um, okay, so my assignment this week was Tomb Raider, the 2013 version. And I know what you're thinking. New game, I would have played it. It's something I wanted to play, just didn't. So, because uh, I was kind of in paying college mode, so I ended up skipping it. So, it's about, basically it's a re reboot of, when did the first Tomb Raider come out? 1998? Oh god, uh, fucking... I think it's 1998. I'm gonna say 6. 98 or 96. I mean, I could look it up. I could definitely look it up. Anyway, it's the reboot of that game, which is about a character named Laura Croft, which undoubtedly you know about, because she's the one that's... I mean, if you don't, I, I don't yeah. think I have much respect for Where they're like, um, her waist looks like a piece of paper, and her boobs look like beach balls. Um, her boobs look like beach balls, and her butt's too big, her waist looks too small, she's too British, uh, she's too pretty. One. All right. Whatever, that's Which what I can agree with the body proportions were a little fucking exaggerated, but I mean... There are people that exist like that. Well, right. You can have big titties, big ass, small, slim waist, right. and still have... You can have this weirdly proportioned body. Why it's not you, like... You cut me off every time. Sorry. But I was gonna say, what well, I don't know exactly what people were expecting when the game came out on a PlayStation 1 where polygons, everybody looked not normal. Everyone. So when you kind of want to have that sexy character, that kind of tends to be what happens. You know, if you have to help. exaggerate through polygons. Right. So then when it came out to come up with more and more games as the technology advanced, I could see where they were trying to keep it in the same ballpark. Like, you know, let's you just kind keep of, her at bigger titties. Well, right, because she was already made that way. 
You know, yeah. it's hard to be like, well, now she doesn't look like that. Given now they can do it all the time, which I'll get into a little bit later. Anyway, this one's about her first expedition ever. It's a reboot and they're just like, yep, nope, starting from the very beginning. And right, she's like, so. She's like 20 almost. Yeah, so when you're used to seeing her in the old one, how she's like super badass, everything like that. She's very, she's very knowledgeable in this one, but you see her study and you see her, um, now kind she has of, like the build of like kind of like one of those uh, those kind of like little, not like preppy bitches, but one of those preppy girls that you, you saw in school, just kind of like right, you know, maybe maybe a B cup, yeah, you know, like a, just a small, slender kind of petite. She doesn't have frame. a B cup in this game. Probably, well, probably a B cup, but a big end B cup. Like yeah. she is, she's close to C, if not C. Well, I mean, it always it doesn't always mean bust. It's all there's well, right. I just I mean. Stuff. That's what I'm basically. <clears throat> anyway, but like, and then like her body is a small build frame. It's, a, it's kind of petite, more or less, but yeah. still athletic. Uh, small butt. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. And it's about where are they. Where, I forget the name of the place that they were trying to find. Um, they're trying to find Yamatai. Yamatai, thank you. Yes. Which <clears throat> is a large Yard. Japanese island, I guess, or area. Do you want to crash course somewhere? Yeah, this? please. Okay. Yeah, because you're kind of like you're kind of tangential, it, right? It's kind of the story. Perfect. The story kind of evolves as you go on, but literally, it's it's a it's a crew and expedition uh, led by a uh, head archaeologist, dumb man, and uh, this rest of this crew, this ragtag crew on the ship. And they're like, "Yep, let's go find this ancient civilization, so we can find this ancient sun princess." And it's just like, "Oh, okay, nobody's found this island, but okay." Queen, damn it. Yeah, sure. Um, she was the queen. And they're like, okay, cool. Why don't we go this way, that place that nobody's gone before? Dragon's Triangle. Which is essentially like Bermuda's Triangle, where every ship crashes. So they crash into the island. Wow, what a big surprise. And then they're stranded with a whole bunch of evil uh, islanders. Nipples. Yeah. Islanders who are also shipwrecked there. Yeah. And they're led by an evil asshole. Yeah. Pretty much so. That's good. Mm -hmm. Good crash course. Well, kind of. Mine was better. Okay. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> how, to, how, to, how to begin this? So, I guess I should start off by saying the game is beautiful. Even, like, even though it's a few years before... What's your impression on it? Like, it's beautiful as shit. Oh, yeah. Yes. It was, um, very pretty. Very, very well put together. Mm -hmm. Like, I agree. Look-wise. It's very put together. Um, a lot of dirt even on my PC. I was just like, whoa! Yeah. Well, I'm not really sure if you can fucking run it. Yeah. Mine runs it, but... <laughs> no, it doesn't. That is not running it. <laughs> That's like... <laughs> running with a limp. <laughs> so another way to crawl. Anyway. Play <laughs> day! But, uh, no, it's, um... Oh, yeah, I agree. It's fucking gorgeous. It's it's really pretty. I don't know. Um, game Informer, hold your tongues. I mean, Game Informer might be like, I don't know. There's too many browns and earthy yeah. colors. Um, it oh, looks game like Informer. it's outside. So I mean, there's no indoor elements. Yeah, and I'm kind of upset. Two out of ten. Oh, you handed me a paycheck. Nine out of ten. God damn it! Fucking Armor Core Five. We counted it bad for the wrong reasons. I know, now is not the time. I know. Not the time. Oh my god, I just had an idea. Anyway. <laughs> um, very pretty. Um, the gameplay is, like, gameplay-wise, very solid. There wasn't times where I was just frustrated at controls. There were a few times, but I'll get into that. Okay. Um, that's... <laughs> Really, the big ones. It's the biggest impression that you have. Not like, man, it's fucking controls. You're just kind of like, the, 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 it's so beautiful. Yeah, really, I, I, like that's what I found myself saying over and every time I got to a new place. I was like, oh, this place is a, is pretty. It's a little bit expansive. It's, you know, it's not just run here, go there, go over here, run here. Mm -hmm. Not something like that. It was very, when I had to do stuff, I wasn't just focusing, okay, good A and B. I was like, oh, that's pretty, that's cool looking, oh, that's this. 
It was never at one time where I was just like bored and looking at something. It was pretty uh. everywhere I went. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. From optional dungeons <coughs> to inside buildings to out. Yeah. It no, was, I agree. It was a well-made, mm -hmm. beautiful game. Yeah. Now, let's get into characters, okay? Yes. Which, really, to me, there's not a lot of... Like, yes, there are some characters, but you might as well have just had Lara, Sam, and the main dude, really. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, him, the bad guy, and um, the archaeological guy. Because the rest of them... You could have just erased from the story, and you would have never known. I don't know the guy, the the, the fucking guy who was essentially like father figure to Laura. Jonah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember his name. I don't. I don't he, feel he the same. That, so was good. Um, I just think he was nice. Laura. Sometimes that voice actress. Ugh. What do you mean? Sometimes she'd say something, and it took totally like, like she would sound too, like. Too, like it sounds like somebody was trying to be really British with some of it sometimes. Was she an English voice actor? I don't think so, but there were times where she said stuff that just made it sound like somebody was trying to make the accent. Oh, like 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 someone who who like make a British accent right. like, immediately go Cockney or something like that. Yeah. Like, we don't all talk like that. Yeah. We talk like this. Is it, what, what, what is it? And that kind of like I was like, ew, okay, stop talking. Like there was just times where I just didn't want to hear her after that. Because it just didn't connect with me. I did. I did actually want to come into play. But there was going well, you're already talking about voice acting. There was one of the things about the nerdy, nerdy, like nerdy tech guy. Uh huh. One of his things in the fucking um documents. Documents was uh she was just sucking Laura's dick. She's like, wow, she's so cool. I swear to God, like it was sounded so fucking forced in that entire fucking document. It was hilarious. Ugh. She's like. Wow, she is so badass. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, you really didn't give a shit about this script. Um, okay, so then we have Sam, which she really don't do anything. She's um, an ancestor of Queen Himiko, which is the one that they were looking for, the Queen of the Storms mm -hmm. and whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, basically her whole thing is like, we're going to sacrifice her so that she can help us escape the island. She was also like the, the lead kind of director behind this entire Cinematographer. Filming, behind this entire like filming this expedition. Because right. it but. was supposed to be kind of like more reality show type things. Yeah, it was It was supposed to be a reality show for, what's his name? Archaeology uh, Man. Archaeology Man. I, I, I don't remember. Literally, this is not giving me shit on the character. <laughs> Dr. James Whitman. That's it. Dr. James Whitman. A celebrity archaeologist. Yeah, he used to be really famous. Like, his life is in shambles now, but they're trying to find Yamatai so that he can rebuild his career, blah, 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 and She's the one that's the head director, which doesn't even fucking matter. So, I mean, really. Yeah, whatever. It do <clears throat> so doesn't matter. So doesn't matter. Um, you know what could have made a good uh, documentary? A GoPro attached attach to Laura Croft. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or three. Just you know. So, that's her whole role. <laughs> um, James Whitman. We already went over him. Boot. Bye. Um... um uh, Conrad Roth. Conrad he's, Roth. Yeah, he's the no, he's the father figure. Yeah, he's the father figure. Which like, you? Yeah. Which I Laura. liked him. I liked him a lot. Laura, you go to jump. Yeah. He's like he's some crystal. I love him. <laughs> and uh, Laura. <laughs> so yeah, he 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 felt like a tutorial guy. Like every no, time he, he felt was it. learning to do something new, she was like. Remember what no. Conrad told me? No, he like only did that like once or twice. The majority of it was just like, oh, you gonna fucking learn. You well, learn, you learn by feeling this. Control when she out. got the bow, when she was climbing, when she was setting up the transmitter, like climbing up the transmitter, all that shit. Well, she was talking to herself about well, it. Well, right, that's what I mean. No, oh, okay, no, okay, that's not right. The and then you see him what? Tutorial, once, man. twice, three times. You do see them, but you keep, a lot of the dialogue and things come over the radio, so it's kind of... Yeah. So it's kind of like kinda whatever. Um, no, seriously, though, like that one line, though. No. The dialogue that they were having, he's just like, um, 
there's a, the point where uh, the, the guy crashes, mm -hmm. and he's just like, "We have to save him." He's like, "No, we have to go. To, you know, we have to go save ourselves." She's like, "No, I'm gonna go fucking save him." He's like, "You have to learn about you have to, loss. You have to learn about uh, sacrifice. You have to learn about sacrifice." What? She's like, don't talk to me about sacrifice. sacrifice. And he's like, a sacrifice is, is a choice. choice you make. Loss is one that's made for you. And that is like the most powerful fucking line. I mean, of all time in this fucking game. Oh, yeah. Like, holy shit. That fucking line. I'm like, oh. And then what does she immediately do? <laughs> My boobs are too loud away. <laughs> too loud? I can't hear you. With the jiggling of here. titties. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Bye. <laughs> like immediately and you're like okay so that's and then what's the main bad guy whatever the fuck his name is um, uh, I don't know if you wanted to go through everyone else no not really they don't do anything Jocelyn Ray's nope she's uh, the black one the black one who is having an affair with Roth all right move on yep. Cause like literally everything else about her is done in uh, the background text yeah it's not even she's an uptight bitch Apparently, according to this, she's like, wow, she actually cracked her smile. That was actually a line of dialogue. She's uh -huh. like, so she's kind of a <clears throat> resting bitch face. Or yeah. Whatever. Um, fucking uh, Jonah. Yeah, he don't matter. He's Hawaiian. Oh, guy. dude, he's um, he's Uncle Tito. Yeah. Yeah, he's... he's... <laughs> 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 um, <clears throat> uh, Grim. The old old pilot man, the, the the ship driver. Oh whatever. I fucking loved him. Whatever. I, I loved him because he was just like, oh whatever. yeah. Whatever. I don't care. I think he's none of these hilarious. characters are important. No, they are. None of them. Besides Grim, they actually make a big deal about Grim. Like Grim has no, as far as I know, he has no fucking written documents documenting the story. He just literally exists in that one time that like like fucking Sam was recording him talking about like giving a fucking what was it. A Scottish kiss, uh, a Scottish kiss to the fucking uh, to the Loch Ness monster. Yep. And then and then he's like, "Yep, I'm gonna fucking be a badass old dude who fights off these fucking islanders." I don't care. There's nothing. The only I think he was hilarious. Like I don't think I don't think that gives him actually fleshed out character. I think he's just hilarious. Cause you don't really see anything else. It was fluff. That's all. Oh, about. Alex. Alex. Oh, Alex, the tech guy. Um, basically, he's like, oh, yeah, I just want to suck on Morse clip. And yeah, it's good. That's it. And then the bad guy. Um, Jesus Christ, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's not even helping. Uh, Matthias. 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 Yeah, Matthias. Matthias. I remember. Instead of Matthias, it's Matthias. Matthias. So it's like math, I-A-S. Matthias. Oh. And, um. He's basically the the main bad guy. He's he's the one that's setting up to do the he's whole. He's all like, um, yo, uh, I'm right about the storms. Yeah. Which, yeah. And and that's it. That's it. He's really flat. He's like, I'm evil because why, evil. I don't understand why you try and give these characters like some kind of redeeming quality. I, I like there's try. none. The no. only thing I, I just laugh at Grim because I think he'd be fucking awesome if they gave him more screen time. If they honestly gave Grim a lot more fucking scream time, I'd love him a lot more. Mm -mm. But other than that, nope. he's just a joke. He falls off. Bye bye. Bye. Well, the only characters that matter are Laura, Sam, Whitman, Matthias. Done. That's it. That's it. That's all that matters. Everything else is just kind of supporting fluff. Right. No, and I agree with you. Which, even in a game that's not even that fucking long, that's too much fluff. Oh, wait, no, um, Alex was an objective once. Oh, yeah. Oh well. <laughs> okay, bye. Oh, by the way, spoilers. Like, character, they don't fucking matter. Spoilers to the fucking max because, uh, fuck your shit. No, like, just, no, I don't want to talk about them anymore. They're not important. Not important. So, let's just get into the ending here because there are parts that I like and I hate. So, you end up going to... Turns out Raze is pregnant with Ross Child. Yay, yeah, woo. Okay. Um... Yeah. <coughs> Which... Yeah, whatever. Let's uh, look at... Well, gameplay-wise. Um... I really mean it. Go with gameplay, because you had you had something to say about it, and you started talking about it. Yes. Your so... 
the gameplay is very solid. You can tell, though, this game was not meant for a PC audience, which is what we played it on. So not meant for that, because everything you what did... We started, what I played it on, and what you started to play it on. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. And everything, it just looked like they were just like, okay, we finished the PC version, now let's just switch everything else to computer controls and paste it, and we're good. Because which I hate that you should always work from the top then down. Which is what I have to say about when we get into your game because that's something I noticed. Because I yeah no yeah. we've talked about this but it looks and um, it's very solid, very good. There are times where glitches do happen, and but they're they're very far in between that they don't really ruin the whole experience. Like there's just a couple times like she'll get stuck or she'll jump. Or she gets stuck on a rock and she just rolls for many, many times during the day. The time I got stuck. Yeah. Um, and you watch me do a side dungeon and I just jumped and I'm like, oh! <coughs> yeah, she just kept going, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, ah, oh! Constantly on this rock and you're just like, okay, we're gonna see how long she does this for. It, the glitch worked itself out, which was nice. Yeah. But, you know. It took a while, probably 30 seconds or so, but at least it fixed itself. Yeah. Like, give it that. So, I mean, there's not many... Like, I didn't run into a bug that made the game impossible. Nothing. Like, I never had to restart because of a bug. I never had to start over because of a bug. Never. So, that was nice. Um, the ones that were really annoying to me were the ones where, like, you're going... Like, um, the river, the waterfall, and she's going down the waterfall, and there's, like, the branches and the pieces of the plane. Yeah. And then you're moving so fast, you can't see. So you're bound to die the first couple times because you don't even know what you're doing. You have no idea what you're doing. You know, ooh, left, right makes me move left to right. But then they're, like, really reaching far out, and sometimes you don't hit them or you're really close to them. And you can't like move fast enough. I, so until you, I don't like, think it's. I don't think it's the worst thing. I. I think it's just. It's really their 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 foresight for it is is really weird because like, it almost seems like you have like, a, almost a, a three second reaction time. Not. I'm not trying to say that like it's a bad thing. Like really fast. But I'm saying like, I don't actually know the human reaction to time off my hand. But so um. Excuse that, uh, but like it just seems like they, when they designed it, they were like, "Oh, this is it. You're you're gonna you go left or right." A lot of times, those are a lot of trial and error for me, and I was just like, "Oh, okay." Well, the problem the part was that, the part it, that kind of bothered me about those kind of sections is I get that it happened and why it happens, but when it honestly just pulls out a gun, slows down time for you, and you yep. shoot, and I'm like, "Okay, one, teach that once." and then let it go. Yeah. Teach that once, and like the game did do that. Yep. Like it, it, it just- Well, what it usually did was when you were in those, it would slow it down the first time and yeah. then you'd shoot it. So and then, then like the next time that you ever played a, a stage like that or a part of a game like that, it would be like, no, we're not slowing it down for it. You better get fucking ready. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, that's fucking great. Because then that teaches people you need to fucking get better at this game. Yeah. We're not going to hold your hand throughout the entire thing. Yeah. The only thing that bothered me is the shotgun. They always pulled out their shotgun and slowed it down. Yeah. So I was like, So okay. it's kind of like, mm. <laughs> Which is, you know, Which when I'm of... flailing down a river, I'm like, oh, where's my shotgun? <laughs> ah! <laughs> <Right>. Um, <laughs> when it, the entire game is about looking at your surroundings to figure out how to solve these puzzles, which is another part of this game, the puzzles take you a while. They really do. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And I like how they, um, you can use, there's a survival instinct that can help you with the puzzles. Well, sometimes it's not so blatantly obvious, like it'll show you, burn this, but it doesn't tell you how, you know? Like, yeah, it shows you the elements of the puzzle, but not what to do. Right. So it doesn't, it, it hands hold you, but it's not going to say, shoot this, do this, it do gives, that. It gives you the box of toys rather yeah. than letting you find it. Right. Letting you time the toys Which together. is okay, because if you didn't want the help, you don't I ever have to use it. that fucking hunter instinct to play. Why, well, no? I think it's survival instinct. The survival instinct. Just, just because, like, I abused it, not for puzzles, but literally... 
for fucking killing people. Because having the entire thing grayscale and then the only like targets being a yellow outline, it was like, well, now this is an easy headshot. Thank you. Yeah. I it's never a, really used it for that. It's the easiest thing that you can do. I'm like, exploitation! And um, so that was cool. Um, the environments are neato. Uh, the, something I didn't really care for was um, the salvaging. Didn't really care for that because it's kind of like like gathering resources right, to upgrade. A lot of the time, like I mean, I could see when you're doing it for bullets, things like that. But then what I found myself doing was killing off a whole bunch of people, making sure nobody else was around, <laughs> and running back and collecting all the shit. Like I used to that Diablo. Anyways. So I mean, I don't really find a problem with that. I don't think that's too much of a bad thing because like that helps you so much mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become like the survival horror limited ammo type situation which is the reason why i use the bow all the time right because i'm like <laughs> like oh, literally if arrows. it's a if it's a weapon that you can retrieve ammo why the fuck would you use right. it the most and not only that but it's not like it's the weakest weapon either it's like the fucking strongest thing yeah. you could ever use and that's usually what i that's what it's I the most utility hurt. weapon too yeah you use it the most out of anything, so that's what I just used. I don't, I don't fucking understand what it is. Goddamn. Unless it was something where I had to, where the shotgun would be more prevalent, like somebody getting up close to me, and I had to dodge and get out of the way and shoot you, them. You mean you didn't take the melee things? Uh, I did. I think that's the worst thing. But I hate the melee. Like, I literally... for style points. I didn't really do it because I wanted it to be an effective scale. I, I was like, no, I'll use a weapon, bye. Because, yeah. like, every time I was like, uh, I think I, I choose a few melee things and, like, to, you know, like, the ones, not the, like, the killing move, but, like, they literally took, like, just to hit them. And they look like they did no damage. Huh. Like, it was just, like, a push or, yeah, I or saw... like, a kick. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, I came this is over the worst. When he was playing it, and he would use it, and he would just knock them back, and it wouldn't really do anything. When when I used it, it they kind of like went instant to kill. Like it didn't. I don't well, know. Well, there's like did. instant kill ones. Like well, there's, no, there's I mean, kill like style when ones. I hit them, it instantly gave me the option to instant kill them after I hit them. But when you did it, it didn't. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe because it was in later in the game, or maybe because uh, you took more fucking uh, melee kill style things. Maybe I just took the pickaxe and like one other thing. Yeah. I took the pickaxe and then the bow. Yeah. For <clears throat> for pretty much fighting melee, and I was like, why would you need melee for a gun? Yeah. So we'll just get those extra like scout salvage, whatever. They're, I think they were all right. I think. It's, Which they're they're all right. I think that was a pretty neat system. I kind of want to get into the scavenger hunt, which is what I'm gonna call it, because there's an option to find all these documents, the GPS caches, the <clears throat> the totems, the everything. Which I actually got the, the upgrade to actually see them in the my right. I did too. <clears throat> Which. All right, fine and dandy, but I feel that there's another whole, like, the game in itself is probably like six hours if you were taking your time. I don't know. Like, I, I know I died were, a lot. I know I'm just kind of, you know, average, pretty average at playing video games, yeah. so, like, you know, I... I'm, well, okay, six hours is a little, maybe eight or nine. Like, I mean, if you skipped all the shit, the game's not very long. Yeah. At all. Yeah. And, like, I, I agree. Yeah. And... It's so, like, yes, it's worth to find them because of the experience, but you don't really need them. You don't. Because half the time you're already killing stuff and you're already doing things that gives you those experiences for the bow, which is what you're mainly going to be using. And that's it. And, and to look for the hidden shit if you really want it. So, I mean, I really didn't even... I started the game when I started playing and I was like, oh, yay, I love these little things. Because I like doing those types of things. But... So not okay for not it to be it. most of the game. Like that is most of the that game. is most of the story and kind of character development. Right. Like you know what the weirdest thing is to understand <clears throat> things. Sometimes you need those to to really enjoy the game. You need those documents to, to enjoy some of the characters. You know, right. to, 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 for some of them, it's like, oh yeah, this is a necessity. I mean. Literally, without knowing that Ray's was pregnant with Roth's baby. I could have lived without knowing that. Like, literally, Ray's like, Roth! Why Roth? And I'm like, 
You know, without that book, which they conveniently place near a fire, so it's like the hardest thing to miss. You, you could have just... Yeah, that, that, guys. Yeah, that scene just looks dumb. Mm -hmm. She's like, Roth, why Roth? I'm just like, all right, cool, he's dead, bye. Nope. <clears throat> all these other ones, like, it's weird. Oh, yeah, characters I don't care about are dying. Matthias. Those fucking entries. Oh, yeah, the ones with the madmen and the stuff, those are the ones I really enjoyed. Because it didn't... I like the Russian dude. Because it didn't talk about... Oh, I do too. I and it know. didn't talk about people that weren't... Like, I mean, of course, they're still not important, but it gave you that backstory into how fucked up their world has turned into. Like, you just land there, and you're like, well, I don't want to. And then they're like, well, then you can die, and they don't care. They will shoot you in the face. He even shows that through cinematics. <clears throat> yeah. Somebody questions him, and he's like... He pulls out a gun, like, no hesitation, just shoots him in the fucking head. Yep. Like, oh! Doesn't care, because oh. the only way to get off the <clears throat> island and let them all go home is exactly what he needs to do. And he's like, I want to leave. I want to leave. And that's it. Period. And that's the main problem that I have, is like... I see him more as a survivalist, 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 than as a bad guy. Because he's doing this to get off the island. The only reason he's seen as a bad guy is because Sam's your friend and you need to save Sam. That's it. Also, it's a pretty stupid ritual to get off the island. Yeah. Which, we'll get into in the ending, I'm not yeah. done. The other thing that I don't really like is this thing where they're like, it's free world you can go anywhere you want to okay no that one actually like Which, i honestly was gonna be upset when i first played this and it was like free world i i hate i don't know i hate free roaming uh, open world sandbox shit i do because to me a lot of the times your game is not compelling for enough for me to care about the story i'm going to play this for an hour a half hour to an hour buck around and then never play this again <clears throat> but it isn't it's not really free world. It's not really open world. Well, no. The main thing is, it's like every time you find a campfire, which is basically your save point where you can upgrade your shit and you can... It's a new level. Right. It's a new level, quote unquote. Which they, they place them at like probably two or three in each like section. There's like a few sections that are like kind of interconnected. It's just... Yeah, weird. like the forest, the temple, the... Yeah, yeah. All that shit. Which is... What I really don't like about it is that they like to make it seem glamorous. Like, they're like, ooh, you can go back here if you want to. And you're I like, never use fast travel. And you're like, why? So I can go get the shit I missed with now the, the free option? The collectibles. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's it? That's all I get out of it? Well, I'm never going to fast travel then. There's no point. Unless I have to go back there for, like, part of the main quest, there's no reason. I think fast travel in this type of game is dumb. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. I could see if it was kind of like a Far Cry type deal, where sometimes things would happen at this location, and you could do it, like, stuff like that. But they don't. At all. Like, the story is way you... too... There's... <clears throat> it's too much linear story for you to give a shit about right. fast traveling anywhere else. Right. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. It's None of the things you collect are important. Except if you want to completely immerse yourself in the story. About characters that are flatline and it, they don't matter. They don't matter. Collecting these things does nothing for you. Oh, and to answer your question, Grimm has no collectible things, as far as I know. Nope. Which... I think I would honestly like to see more of him, but that's just me because I like eclectic characters like that. I just do. But then again, he's he's cool to me because he's a Scottish fucking old dude. So, uh, fast travel is stupid. I don't understand it and never will understand it in this game. There was no need for it. Unless it is something like Far Cry, something like Elder Scrolls, it's not worth the fast travel. It's not. I can see where you're going for people who are, like, <gasps> collecting stuff. But then again, you could have done the same exact thing like they did in, like, Resident Evil 5 or whatever, where they're each in chapters and you could just pick one at random to collect them. The thing That is, way I don't have to waste my time. The thing is with, with fast travel and, like, being semi-open world or even open world at all is that you have to have a reason to go back other than collectibles. 
Right. Usually in most of the world, they have like side quests, side stories, all these other things. And Collecting shit without any dialogue is not a fucking side quest. I mean, it's interesting it's to a see, chore. see Laura like pick up a mask and she's like, oh, this depicts an angry. Oh, those, are, those are pretty period. nice. Yeah. And it's nice. Did you pick up the one that was a dragon and it turned out to be fake? No. Yeah, there was one. It, it looked, she looked at the bottom. It said "Made in China." It was the fucking best. I think. I think it was kind of hilarious. I'm like, you know, I kind of enjoyed that. It was a good no, one. I didn't. I didn't really. No, I didn't enjoy the concept as a whole. But it's just like, oh, these nice collectibles. That was just the most hilarious thing. It's just like she picked it up. She, oh, what does this dragon mean? Oh, it's made in China. All right, bye. <laughs> Which is awesome. But it's like I missed out on that because I didn't care. I like. I like started looking because like I was like, oh, where are these gold boxes? There might be refuse, and because like I wanted to upgrade shit. Yeah. Because like to me, I just wanted to fucking upgrade a lot more. Which is one of my favorite. Like one of the best things that you can do for a game for me is like I like to think things upgrade. So Rogue Legacy is a fun game for me. Um, this one's a fun one because I can see how I went from a makeshift bow made out of twigs to an actual like you looking bow to a modern day bow so it was really cool to me to kind of see that and that gave me that kind of push to upgrade them because i wanted to see what it was going to be next and what it was going to look like mm -hmm. and how cool i'm going to look mm -hmm. and that's the only reason how cool you're going to look well like some, <laughs> some like i like to see that type of shit grow i don't really like to see oh, i'm just going to constantly use this bad idea for a bow too Oh, I don't, shit. I don't, I don't want that. So it makes me look better, and it makes me feel more strong, even though it really didn't do anything. But, I mean, it did. I like, really they did. Mixed in, I like that they mixed in stuff with the bow. Yeah. Like, they obviously didn't just disregard the bow after you got guns. They were right. like, you're going to re keep redoing bow. You're going to need a better bow. You're going to need a better pickaxe. You're going to need... You're gonna need all this better shit. You get a rope for, for furthering your progress. I'm like, you're obviously making us use the bow. That is an amazing thing of game design. Right. Because you've been obviously teaching us that like, oh, guns. Most modern games are just, once you have guns, you're better off. Right. But the thing is, this bow is used for platforming as well. And I think that's wondrous. So, I think that's really all I have to say on gameplay-wise. So, overall, very short enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. I really want to try Rise of Tomb Raider, which is the one that's new. That's the new one. Did you try the new... Did you try the, the, the side caves? Um, I did the first one and I did another one I found and then after that I was like, whatever. They're, just they're, they're just like extra refuge stuff. Right. But like, holy god, they're just a bit challenging like that. One that I was working on, I was like, no, oh no, I did three. I lied. I did... Um, the one with the wind, which I liked, which was, um, took me a while to figure out because I was like, where, where the fuck am I? Because sometimes when you're supposed to jump to something, it's like at a weird angle. And then she grabs onto the ledge and she pulls herself up. So for a long time I spent, because it was the one where you would have to, one would open this door and blow wind and move this, like, uh, platform thing and would move it higher so that you could jump to get where you needed to be. Well, I mean problem was I didn't know where to jump, but I figured it out eventually. No. But a lot of these puzzles are just really they're really good. They <clears throat> I feel like they put they, they, they really stress you to push the mechanics of the controller, like yeah. the, the, the game and how it works. Like when, when you're like, oh it's optional. It's not like oh it's something that's super easy. Here's your extra bonus. It's actually like here's thought process. Figure it out. You need to figure this out. Yeah. So that was nice. I really liked that. Um, other than that, uh, they, like, the loading sometimes, man. I was just sitting there, I'm like, does this really need to load, though? Well, right, like, when they do the optional dungeons, they don't load. You walk through a, um, what's the word? Like a, like a, you walk through the dungeon, mm -hmm. and... She walks super slow, like you're used to, like running. Oh and all yeah. Of a sudden she's like, and like the, to do a load screen, she like starts walking into explore this cave, and I'm like, so you're loading, and then the instant you're in the place, she's running back to normal, even though no space has changed. Sometimes you just walk into a big space, and she's just walking, and then all of a sudden she starts running. I'm like, oh, it's loaded now. Okay. <laughs> all right, that's that's a clever way to cover it up. 
Yeah. <clears throat> but it's like, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's the worst. No. But you're not fooling anyone either. There were other load screens, though. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing I do have to say, which is what I love about this game the most, mm -hmm. the way she dies. I they do, so... they go through so many fucking death animations. Right. And the thing about it is a lot of the times when you're playing these types of games, you're like, she's a woman, she can't die very brutal. She dies fucking brutally, and they don't care, which is the best part for me. I'm like, I did thank wanna, you. I did want to ask. For not sugarcoating her deaths, because if it was a man, they would have died that way. Exactly. And they're like, we're not holding any punches. You die, you're going to see. A girl gets fucking smashed by rocks, killed, stabbed, stabbed and impaled. Do everything. <clears throat> Choked to death. Even shot like, in actually in game, when she falls in that fucking rebar, I'm like, oh, yep. Jesus Christ. They don't oh. not care. And that's my favorite part about this game, is that they don't care. They're like, oh, she's a woman. She needs to be soft-spoken. They're like, no, she's going to get killed. She's going to get hurt. Just the same as the guy. Just exactly. So they're like, she's going to get hurt. And the most gruesome one I've seen is when she's going down the river and she takes a oh. airplane spike oh. from the bottom of her mouth through her head. Oh, God. I know. I love that one. It's good. And that one was the most eclectic to me because I'm like, that shows you don't care. That shows that no matter what, you're going to show it 100%. Because a lot of the times people are like... They hold no, back. They yeah, hold back. Like, they hold back. And I don't like, want you to think this why? girl is getting in trouble or right. hurt. Which is the same thing that I praised the Mortal original Kombat for. The original games did that too. Exactly. They're like, you're going to fucking die. You're going to get smashed. You're going to die. Like, There's so many clays that they animated her dying. Right. And with the same thing with Mortal Kombat, they're like, we don't care. Everyone dies the same. It doesn't matter. Good. Except for fucking quality. <laughs> that's, uh, that's all I'm asking for. It's like I'm tired of like, if you're going to show your woman is powerful, kill her in a powerful way. And that's what Make gave it me Make fucking her. matter. Exactly. Instead of giving her and like, oh, she sprained her ankle, she's dead. And you're like, oh my god, I feel bad in the skin of my name. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> um... I did want to ask before we leave on, uh, I'll leave, uh, that part, is, um, the beginning. You started playing at my house. Yeah. And remember when that Brock fell and you were trying to kick off oh, that island? yeah. And I died and I was like, holy shit. No, no, no. That part? Yeah, that part. But, like, you didn't know what the fuck to do. Oh. I was stuck in that for so fucking long. Right. It's well, like a fuck it. It's a it's a quick time event, and you just kind of like crawl through the hole, <laughs> and then there's an islander that grabs you like you're like, ar, 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 ar. and if you don't kick him off, you die. You get crushed. The, the rock crushes you, which, and they give you a full frontal of that. Well, the thing that was really frustrating was like, okay, it told me to wiggle back and forth. Well, then there was a time where I had to press a button. It was a, it was a circle closing in. All it had was a symbol in it. I was like. What, what? So it would close in, and I'm like, what key do I press? You're dead! And I died. And I died again, and again, and again, and again, It took me again. so fucking long. And I actually, like, exit, open up the fucking things, like, what the fuck does this symbol mean? It shows me the symbol, right next to the key, and what it means in plain fucking text. Right. Which, I can understand when you're trying to teach your players how to play the game. But you have to show me what to do first. We are in a modern day era where the game manual isn't there. No more. No more. I would have to care. open it into a different thing and I don't, you know, and it takes twice as much work as it did if you're just handing me a piece of paper. Now. Or if you just show it in gameplay. I can understand you're trying to teach your player. Now, that's like a teacher being like two plus two equals what? No help, go. How I don't have there's, any information. There's not even context. Like right. it's, it's not like it's a button all its own either. Right. Like because it's because that same button is context sensitive. Right. But the thing is that, that it's really shitty about it is that they're like they don't teach you that. Right. So and like, no matter you. and if I press any other button there, console was I changed. Die. Console was a change as a button. Yeah. It, it does, was just a button. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. No, because that clearly shows that it was the PC was kind of like more of an afterthought, right? Because which actually kind of was it because was I was like, well, what the fuck? What, what the fuck? 
what the fuck? And it just, it did nothing besides frustrate me. Because it was like, immediately outside of the game, if I was anybody else, I would have been like, that's stupid, I'm done, I don't want to play this game. Because you didn't give me the proper information I need. When you showed me how to set myself on fire, I got that. When I needed to swing back and forth and catch on fire, I got that. When you needed me to solve a puzzle, you gave me the things before that helped me solve those problems. Now you're starting me not even 10 minutes into this game Quick time and, I, and I don't know what to do. And I died over and over and over until I was like, okay, maybe I should slow down and try and figure out what to do. Because if I press any other key, I die. I just looked at the and key binding. That, that, was, that was my solution. But there's two options. There's two options for those types of events. Because when I tried to do the wolf, I had to mash one key and hit the other key. Yeah, there's there's E and then F they use. Right. So sometimes I have to use F and sometimes I have to use E. And it doesn't 100% tell me in a quick time event how I'm supposed to figure this out. Oh, you're dead. The only way I figured it out was slowing down and reading it as I needed to press the button, which killed me that time. But then the next time I knew what to do. But why do I have to die the first time? Why am I being punished for not knowing that info? I'm being punished immediately. Oh, because because PC games can be switched or key binding, so it's better that they have a symbol. Okay, why don't you have like a text bar, like right at the top or the bottom, like maybe big text, bigger text. Maybe it's obscuring your vision, but you could probably turn it off. Have settings say that you can turn it off. But Jesus Christ, Something. you didn't tell me shit. Nothing. You, you fucking, I don't know how you found it because you just played the game afterwards, but how did you find I told you. I told you what button to yeah, press. You didn't tell me at all. And the, game, the game didn't tell you. I, when I played, I was like, I've died eight fucking times in this shit. And I yeah. opened up the key bindings and everything. I'm like, okay, why couldn't you just tell me that's a button? Right. And I, he was sitting behind me and I'm like, what do I do? And he's like, hit F. I was like, what? So I had to hit F, but when I was referring to when I had to stop and like look at it was when I was with the wolf too, because you had to stop and slow down and be like, okay, this is a different symbol. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do? Like it just I, didn't... I think, I think one of the ones that kind of like, one of those quick time events that kind of annoyed me was when she was wounded on the ground and there's wolves passing through the woods. I was like, dude, I'm so mm -hmm. fucking tense. And I'm like, dude, I'm ready. And then the wolf jumps and then slow motion. I'm like, come on, well, like, you piece of shit. Just let me, you already have me free roam aiming. Yeah. Why don't you just fucking let me shoot it? If I miss, I die. Fine, failing. Put me back well, in the same like event. Just fucking let me shoot it without your slow time hand-holding bullshit. Well, not only that, the same thing I had with that problem was like, I've got the free roam. The bushes are like two feet away from me. Not only that- the Wolves jump though. <laughs> Leaping wolves. Not only that, but if you had put them farther away and gave me a way that I can kind of figure out where they're gonna come from, I wouldn't have to be handheld into the slow motion. It would have been as simple as that, but instead, I don't think I don't think you should have been handheld in slow motion in the first place. No, even at this current distance. No, like, well, no, that that's a little too close for somebody that's like, and there's no way of telling what where a the baby. Wolves, no, for how where the wolves are going to come from. Now, what I did was I was moving back and forth, trying to figure out if there was a way that I could find where the wolf was coming from so that I could prepare for the shot. But they don't do that. They show like trees rustling, so I'm like, oh, it's over here, when it came over across from the other side. So if it wouldn't have been for the slow motion, I would have In all honesty, I agree. If, if they would have just, you know, maybe put like more rustling right. and like more confusing lines. Like, you know, like a ball cup game, essentially, but with bushes rustling. Right. That would be hilariously amazing. I, I mean, mean I'm not funny, talking yeah. about where it's like so obvious that like, oh, it's game time. But like a little something to help me guess where it's going to be so I can be in the general vicinity. If there was an algorithm to make the wolf jump in different areas, yeah. to kind of change up the game, just a small little algorithm. That's it. And, and that, that would have made that fucking scene a lot better without slow motion. Right. Where we were like, yes, great. Yeah, and they don't do that. So it was like, that was a spot that was kind of... Don't worry, your hunter instincts will come and make you pull out a shotgun while you're flailing down the river. I now. know. <laughs> I'm so fast for that. I like how they did that for the, the hang glide, the zip lining. Yep. Where you try to jump from zip line to zip line. Mm -hmm. They're like, uh, slow down? Okay, no slow down anymore. We don't do that shit. Yeah. I'm like, oh! 
You're learning now, Tomb Raider. Thank you. Yeah, but I wish they would have stuck with that. Yeah. They just... It, those are the like you could feel them hand holding you and that's what was frustrating because it was like I just don't want to sit here and be handheld I don't I just want it to be make it feel like I'm a competent person that's learning just like how Laura is learning you should if improve. you had made it that way it would I would have felt closer to the game because she doesn't know what she's doing and I don't either but for all that's all that's okay well what about ending eh yeah I mean, the only thing that was really notable... But Bias was like, Oh, I'm already summoning the bitch inside of Sam. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, go I busted the ghost. Yep. And then, and then we win. We go home. Yep. And then she's like, I'm not going home. You're gone. And the, the only thing that was really good about it was the homage to her in the other two winners. How she had the two guns. Because that, that's usually what she had. I don't know what we're talking about. Oh, actually. at the ending. Because um, she knocks his gun out of his hand. Yeah. And then she grabs both of them and she shoots yeah. them. Yeah. Right? Well, you shoot them. I and mean, it's probably the loose homage. It's like a stretch gun. Like she, well, she's only two pistols. That's like saying, oh, dude, she has a booty. Well, no, that's what it's like. <laughs> That's w because the whole time she, you usually know that's what you should carry is yeah. two handguns. Yeah. And then she never carries two handguns in this entire thing. And then she's like, oh, I have the two. And then she's standing over the cliff. And then you kind of get the full thing of that's what she's supposed to look like was that, which I liked. That's the only thing I, I really kind of like her, her new. I like kind of like her new outfit. It's mundane, bland. If you would have made it Tomb Raider. Explore the island with all all this fucking <laughs> Tomb Raider and the story. Island. <laughs> and the story. Story. I think it would have been a much better where you made it more Far Cry esque with side quests to do and not and a story, but not make that a hundred percent your focus because that's all the game was. Was oh, I want to finish the story. I don't care about anything else. Instead, you should have made it more fun. And it was not. I, I think, fun. like, the thing is, I, I heard someone actually complain about having story in games. Uh -huh. It's just like, well, I don't think story, like, the story... Get the fuck out. Well, like, story doesn't have a place in games, so you play a game for you, you know, to just entertain yourself. It's like, well, that's the weird thing, though. What about a book? What about a movie? Well, like, the thing is, is, like, for video games, it's just like, if you try for a story, make it good. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't see how this is a problem. Where like, if you're going to try for any fucking medium, try. Right. Actually, do something. Don't fucking half-ass it. And the, and I don't know. Like I don't, I don't. Like, that's, a, that's a weird thing. I just wanted to bring that up. That's a, this. The, like the thing is, is that like it's like you wanted to be everybody's best friend, and you're just like this is a very sensitive subject. We shouldn't. And I'm like. But the, that's my main problem with it, is that the way you killed her, the way you handled the thing, oh, the way you did it. There was everything. actually a big controversy about this. About how she was killed? No, well, kind of, but not really. Uh, there was, um, remember the quick time event where you're just, like, sitting there, like, <gasps> back against the wall, and the dude just walks by with a shack? Yeah. That people, um, people got upset because one of the developers misspoke and said, yep, this island pretty much rapes her. And I'm like... That's an interesting word choice. I mean, like, you're sounding like someone who plays on the Xbox Live on the weekends. Come on. Yeah. Like, and, and, like, everybody's, oh, the new fucking Warcraft does rape. It's like, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, that could be a very good possibility on an islander full of males who fucking kill off every female. Yeah. There is, one, the only time that she gets kind of um, felt up, she does defend herself. Yeah, that, in, that like, was a time. normal, like, way. Like, she elbows him in the groin. She, she and fucking... She, Hits him in the elbow and, and you shoot him in the him. dick. Yeah. yeah. Most people aim for the dick, to be honest. Yeah. So that was kind of what I liked about it was like, oh, this could really happen. I thought it was going to get more graphic than that, and it really didn't, which is fine. I wasn't really hoping for that. But like, I wasn't really hoping for rape, but you know. Like, right. Usually when something like that happens, some other guy shows up and shoots him or. Oh, you saved like, me. My pussy's wet. Oh, Barry. Thank, thank you for saving my pussy. pussy. Yeah, it's okay. And uh, there was a lot of things that they tried, and that's what I like, was I don't like it when a game is supposed to be nitty and gritty, but it's a girl character, so we have to stop. So she comes out clean, but the world is gross. Right. 
And I'm like, no, in this game, she, and that's established really early on. That's a good, that's a good achievement. And the, my, one of my favorite lines in this entire game is when she's like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, I had to kill some people. It was scary. And he's like, I know, it's scary to kill someone. And she's like, no, it was scary on how easy it was to do it. Like, she didn't. Yeah, no, like, that's like, the, her survival came in and she's like, I have to do this. Some, some, there was actually a common complaint about that. It's just like, in, in cinematic, yeah. it's more graphic that you, that you, um, it's not in cinematic, in gameplay, it's easier that you, you can kill people. But like in the game, they're supposed to draw it up like she's killing people. She's she's so fucking like distraught over it. Yeah. And, but like, I, it's kind of a it's it is a you know, it's not cognitive dissonance. It's something else. Uh, but it's it's essentially like a separation of reality mm -hmm. between gameplay and uh, and story because you can't obviously show in game. Uh, 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 usually as a gate person who plays games, you're like, pull out gun, shoot wolf, pull out gun, shoot yeah. guy, pull out gun, shoot man, and my, pull out bow, headshot. One of my favorite things is like when the game first starts, you can tell on how she wants to be light and how she doesn't want to do so much work. Like, uh, not not work, because that doesn't sound she right. She doesn't want to do this down and dirty bullshit. Right. And... But she's at, like, not to do so. Right. And at the end, at the, in the end of the game, you can see where she she was kind of innocent before, and she's gotten rid of that. She's like, it's, I have to know more. It's kind of like that Lord of the Flies-esque feeling, except yeah. I, I, I can't stand to read through Lord of the Flies again, but it is a good piece of literature where, like, she's had, you've seen her loss of innocence. Yeah. It is gone. It's gone. It's fucking destroyed. She realizes what she has to do. Like, when she has to climb the transmitter, she's like, I was hoping you weren't going to say that. Like, and then she's like, oh, more climbing. And by the end of it, she's like, okay. Yeah. Because she has to climb the entire She's mountain. gone through this entire thing, and she'll never be the same. Mm -hmm. She'll now, because of Rise of the Tomb Raider, it, it's almost like destined that there would be a sequel. There's two fucking co outcomes of this situation, and depending on how her character took it, she's going to seek this out even more. Right. From, but depending on the way that her character took it, she's going to seek this out even more. If, yeah. she, if, if anything, Sam is probably going to stay far the fuck away from it. Yeah. That's it. Like that's that's how you fucking deal with it as a character, as a person, is that you you had to have an active role in doing something among this island. Yeah. That you, that took you on this vast, incredible journey. You're not going back from this. This is not a journey that stops. Yeah. Once you've made that decision, you're going with it. Yeah. You know? Sam was pulled into it. She's yeah. probably going to be like, no, I want to yeah. go nowhere near this fucking shit. Ever. Well, I don't know. Although, then again, I can kind of see where it's going to be like, I'm the cinematographer. I'm the cinematographer. I'm the cinnamon toast cruncher. <laughs> the cinematographer. And she's going to be like, I need to be there. So I can kind of see where she might be pulled into it, even though she doesn't want to be. She's probably going to have that same syndrome that or, Sarah had. Or just have a GoPro. <laughs> like I said, just have GoPro, film your expeditions, and then be like, hey, investors, pay for my next trip. Here you go. Yeah some footage from GoPros. Right? Like, like, literally you are the easiest fucking money making machine now. So, um, that's about it, I think. I don't really have too much more to say about gameplay anymore, or the ending for that matter. Um, I, I, I think I've pretty much been through everything that I like and what I don't like. And okay, you want to bullet point it then? Um, Story shot, character shot, um, fast travel needless. Antagonist is flat. Yeah. Well, nearly. Yeah. I, I like. It's good that they had fluff, but nearly flat. Almost. But when sixty percent of your game is fluff, we have an issue. Your game was not very long. It didn't really do anything amazingly. The DLC wise. was dumb the because DLC, it was just outfits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and multiplayer. I didn't even want to play multiplayer. I'm like, no. Nope. did. No. Nope. Um, and the, the, fuck the, 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 the things that I really, really enjoyed about this game were how strong they predicted or uh, made this character, the change in her emotion, and those are really two of the biggest things that I liked. So, I mean, 
I would probably give this game an 8 out of 10 just for the look, the way she interacts, the way she changes, everything like that. But I, I can't give it much more than that because the, the game is mostly flubbed. If I can play the game and it doesn't really change anything... Like your story, your story you probably wrote like 10 pages. Right. Like, like, you're just like, here's the script, here's the main idea, ad lib. And then when, and then when the, the producer was like, what the fuck is this? Why this? Why this? Why this? Like, right. uh, hold on, keep that script. We're going to go write some loose leaf papers, and yeah. then we're going to hand those to you, and then we're going to spread those throughout the game. Right. I'm like, that's the dumbest fucking idea. Money! Yeah. So, that's what I would like to see change, is more development in the interaction with characters that we haven't seen before. Because I don't think Reyes or Jonah or Roth... Or... I'm not going to say that I know the fucking first Tomb Raider games that well. Uh-huh. But I, I do... I, I, I think do... there was a Whitman, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, no, I was talking about how they do story. Oh. I, like, because there's usually, like, like, fucking 150 levels. Well, it's usually just going here, finding stuff, and here's the story. It's a lot of exploratory things and, like, a lot of yeah. dungeons and a lot of puzzles, and I'm like, cool. I don't remember stories much, mainly because, like, I remember we blazed through the first fucking Tomb Raider, and we enjoyed the fuck out of it. We had, we owned the second one, and we never beat it. Yeah. So, that's how I feel about it. It was... You need to expand a little bit on the story, and you need to expand on the characters, and you need to lower down... Like, I liked the fluff, but give me a variety of fluff instead of just look for shit. Give me a variety of fluff. Break that shit down. Right. Stop. And then I would... This game could be really good from the expansion... Or from the sequels on. It could make this Tomb Raider better than the old Tomb Raider because of the way it changed like even though you ba which I have no problem with new Laura new Laura I like even more than old Laura because because you don't like big titties in your face well no I, I mean like I was never that's, that's a lot of people's like thing is like they're like oh god they're changing it like okay to be fair I'm not saying I don't care about unrealistic proportions, but the thing is, I don't think they're very unrealistic. I just think they're out of most women's reach, so people think that they're unrealistic. Right. And I'm like, that's completely fucking stupid in your arguments and value. Well, I've that. never... I've never found Lara Croft even closely sexy or resembling anything sexy. Watch out for that bit. Yeah, that's what exactly what I was thinking. And well, as time moved on, they smoothed out those titties. <laughs> like... When people, that's all you focused on. Like, I hate it. Because people are like, oh, she's got titties and a big ass and a small waist. So that makes this game terrible. Stop focusing on other people. Maybe if you focused on your own self, this wouldn't be a fucking issue. All right, stop talking. Start, stop outwardly projecting your fucking insecurities right. and fucking just play the game and play it as is. Well, not only that, but She can be sexy and pull out fucking this bullets out from of her, her titties. Pussy. Yeah, like, whatever. I don't care. But, like, you have to play the game to understand that she's a character. Right. They, I mean, of course, it's, unless it's, like, really unforgiving and stupid, like, fucking treating, oh, like, oh, goddamn fucking ride to hell. Yeah. yeah. Where, and like, sex is just there. Just, like, beat up a guy, have sex with a girl. Like, you know, that's just, just right. ridiculous. But the thing is, you should actually play a and fucking game. And the thing that game. sucks is, like... She was one of the most developed characters in that era, of that PlayStation era, where you got a continuous character, because around those times, you mostly had Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, and they, and they had story, but it wasn't in depth. Lara Croft, she had a lot of story, a lot of backstory, and a lot of development from that one character. Yeah, that, that went on for, like, 15 years. Exactly. But everybody was just like, no, she's got big tits, and everything was blown away. And you're like, you have to look past that sometimes. So, you know, sometimes, like, you have to you have to look past it. Like It's excusable if the game merits it. If you're just putting titties and sex and ass in there just to have titties, ass, and sex, we have an issue. That's where I stand on it. No, but she would like just because she looks that way does not mean this game does not have something there. It has there, there's lot. value, 
And you, you just, you just completely dismissed it. Just and everybody because was you... just like, "Oh, men only like it because titties." Well, maybe men like story, and maybe people like good characters. Also, how is that bad? If, if I see, if you go up, pull me up to a used car lot, you go, you show me this piece of shit fucking car, but it runs well. What, what's the problem? If you show me this fucking, if you go up to a new car lot. And you show me this shiny new Mercedes, and I'm like, holy shit, breaks down. that's too expensive. And it has good gas mileage, has all these fucking neat features. What's the problem? It looks good, and it drives well. Yeah. My point is, Lara Croft looks good, and her games play well. Yeah. What the fuck is the problem? And, you know, I can see where, like, like it, she's got big titties and the game doesn't work. Then we can have an issue because you've obviously focused mostly on body image and ma getting that male market that's going to be like, look, titties and ass. You know what? In all honesty, I don't think it's a bad idea. Sex sells. Number one marketing rule: sex sells. Make a sexy character. Sex sells. Fucking yeah, sell but, a whole bunch of magazines. Sex sells. Even though, then guess what? Your game still plays like shit, and at the end of the day, you're never going to see that character again. And then that person's going to have to live with, oh, well, all I did was titty. I made a shitty character. Cool. And you know what? It's it's the difference between longevity and uh, just attention time, retention time. It's attraction and longevity. Two different completely things. Longevity, spank, bank, different. Yeah, different. And. Like, well, we're getting really freaky I, again. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we're, we're going in depth, which okay. is something that kind of needs to be said and done anyway. That's kind of like when I'm playing a game and there's a character who's shirtless and he's got six-pack abs. I'm not even going to look completely. DMC up. Dante. Exactly. Dante and Cradle. Do I, would I wish I had six-pack abs? Yes. But am I going to sit here and be like, oh, he's got six-pack abs. I don't like this game because he has, he's, he's muscular. Well, sorry, I'm not that insecure about it and I'm not that sad about it and the game plays well. Sorry. And I have no problems with it. None. I just love that this is always a problem with women just like unrealistic proportions. Like I know. have you seen Gears of War? Have you seen their man? man? No. <laughs> fucking I think Gears of War is about the worst fucking Did you see example. the new ones? Oh yeah they're slim athletic yeah. people. Which is something I like. And girl yeah. Well, and she's still slim and athletic looking, too. She looks like the same shape as this blonde Oh, yeah. Top. No, I just, I just mean, Which, like... Which, then I read a comment that was like, Oh, we're used to them being tatted and muscly. Don't fuck up the series. And I'm like, really? Is the muscles tattooed? I think the... I think the style of Gears of War should stay back where it is. Yeah. Just because it's, like, over super masculine fucking right. blood gun guts. And that's what sold Gears. I don't. I don't care. Oh like, yeah. That's same that's ex thing with Bulletstorm when they're like, "We're gonna Bulletstorm touch. sold." <laughs> well, yeah, it did. I didn't hear shit about it. I play. I owned it and I played it and was. I didn't. I never finished it because wasn't Neil Patrick Harris in that? Yeah. Yeah. They had a lot of famous people in it, which I liked it because I liked that kind of vulgar humor. Because sometimes they're like, yeah. "Murder boner" is still gonna be my favorite word. But, that's just that's just always been a prevalent thing. I love hearing that shit. But uh, yeah, I never finished it because it was a broken mess. But it was yeah. fun for a while. I like I like the idea that they went with it, but it, they didn't execute it well. So that's where the problem lies. So as long as you make a workable and good game, then I don't care what your characters look like, really. Exactly. It, it, it just comes down to good gameplay, good story, and love well. I'm not saying oh well, there has to be a reason. Some things you can say that too, but you know you can't just make a story reason for having big right. titties. Yeah, that's just people. She's like, oh, I have big titties because titties. Just like the same thing. I think it's like, all right. It's just like she's obviously not going to be the same sex symbol back then. But the thing is, we don't have sex symbols anymore. Yeah, we've kind of ousted that out of our public society. We don't yeah. really have sex symbols. We have porn stars. We don't really have sex. And we have sexy looking people, but we don't have people who are just like, look at my pussy. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we don't have, we don't have a Marilyn Monroe. Right. We don't, we don't have someone have who just, anymore. who's just sexy and an icon. And that's kind of where Laura Croft died off, too, was um, the it's, sex symbol era. It's the same thing with fucking Duke Nukem. Right. Duke Nukem is this big masculine thing from the oversaturated hyper violence of the 80s and, and the almost 90s action movies and shit yeah. like that. We can't have that in this era. It just doesn't really work. What we are working on is more athletic built men and, Which and is, martial arts. And they oh. do look nice. They yeah. still look good and they still, you know, you don't have to be a muscle head to be sexy or look nice. 
you know? Yeah. Just don't look like a twig, because then you look sick. <laughs> uh, gross. I mean, everybody has different preferences of yeah. what's sexy or what's not. Right. Yeah. Stop trying to appease everyone because you can't. Right. And if you try to appease a certain niche, you're pandering too much. Right. There's a certain balance. There's that can nothing be made. wrong with that because if you're gonna sit there and tell me that you're like, oh, I have big titties, I love them, then I get to tell you that your shape isn't correct because you have big titties, small waist, and a big ass. And then you well, that's hourglass, but you know whatever. Well, right, yeah. But like, I think the thing is, is that people have different tastes. But right. however, whatever we do, whatever we create, people complain because that's the only figure they see. Well, like that's the thing. That's what makes money because right. that's the majority of taste. But the majority of taste is in big asses and big titties and small waists, and that's where the money is. I don't want to have to look at an ugly person all day unless it's obviously <laughs> the point. <laughs> Sorry. Unless it's something like, you know, something where you're not supposed to look sexy, like bully, or you're not supposed to, you know, like, I want to look at something attractive. Does it have to be overly exaggerated? No. But does it have to look normal? Yes. Yeah. So, as long as your game's good, do whatever the fuck you want. But I swear to God, if you hand me a piece of shit with a sexy person on the box, I'm going to throw it in the fire and never remember that person. That's why Laura Croft was memorable back then. Because she had good games and she was hot. Period. Yeah. That was it. And people don't like that. There are probably some sexy game characters that came out and died off. I don't mind. I don't, I don't doubt it. Wait, that's what I'm saying. Like... Uh, are we good? Do we think we're good on that? You yeah, said eight out of ten. Okay, yeah. done. We're good. <laughs> done being preachy. I think I think we're gonna push all these social fucking issues out pretty fast. We should just come out with another podcast. I swear. I, I I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm Johnny, if you're up for it, but you know, and I. Um. Because uh, I, I have a few other ideas, like special ideas, special episodes of maybe XP. Well, I'm hoping that eventually this is gonna, this we're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna kind of expand into like a basic review kind of two deal. Because I do. There's one that I want to actually do about comparing all the first episodes of the Star Wars trilogy. Oh. And that's gonna be from four different points of view: Dallas, me, Randy, Andrew. Huh? Well, if you ever get. Into it. Yeah, no, that's that's entirely the point. Like the thing is, Randy has enough time. Dallas has enough time. Andrew, I can call him. I can call him. And be like, can you be available this day, please? Okay, just you. so. Yeah. I'll talk about this all the time. Now, let's get into your game, which is one of my favorite games. That should taste so sweet. Okay, I, so I love that song. Would you best. like me to do a rundown? Oh yeah, you can do it. All right, so the game that I proposed to Noah was Bioshock, which is one of my favorite games of the Xbox era. Um, it's about a person who crash lands to a, white, a lighthouse, happens to go inside, and underneath this lighthouse is a big city called Rapture. Under the sea. <laughs> Did you know they have a parody of that? Yeah. No, I know that. <laughs> of course, of course I, I showed fucking, you that, I think. And, yeah, it's fucking college uh, humor. Of course, that shit comes out. You find out that the city is created by Andrew Ryan. There's another guy named Atlas who's lost his kids. You're there to help him find his kids. So on and so forth. And Aaron Ryan... Wow. Ayn Rand. <laughs> Ryan Andrews. What are you doing? I like the music. <laughs> I, I like the music for the, from the it's era. It's the... Ba oh, I do too. Is... Uh, the bad guy here, basically. And you're there to basically escape. Oh, by the way, spoilers are you piece of shit and you haven't played it, I guess. Yeah, Whatever. it's been seven years. Or no, more than that. It's, it's 2008. No, I thought it was 2007. We'll play 2007. We'll go with that. So it's been a few years, so you should have played it. And plus, it's one of the best ones of the Xbox 360 area. Launch title, by the way. So. You know... Like, the thing is, like, I was, like, sitting there, I was like, oh, okay, cool, I, I, I was actually, I'm not having a fun time, for the longest time, yeah. up to, up for a few chapters, I was not having a lot of time, I was like, a lot of time, or a lot of fun? A lot of fun, I was like, uh, shoot, shoot, and, I, and, like, like, I was like, shit, really trying hard, you know what, actually, I'll save that for gameplay. Uh, but I was really trying hard for a little while, and then I was just like, I don't know, fucking Jesus Christ, I, I am not having fun. It only, it only had got me to have fun up until the, the twist! 
Um, well, you didn't have fun up until the twist, or? I wasn't really having that much fun up okay. until the twist. I was like, hmm. Okay. Okay. So, first impressions, what do we got? I was, I was like, well, that's pretty neato. That, that's it. Like, that's about my exact fucking thing. It's just like, well, this is pretty neato. I yeah, guess. you didn't hold your standards up very well anyway. I, I wasn't, I wasn't holding my standards up that much. I wasn't like saying, oh, dude, this has to be hyper-realistic or this has to be fucking right out the gate. You have to punch me in the dick with fucking WoW Factor. You don't have to do that. That's, that's not, that's not needed. Yeah. But you, you are obviously, you're, you're there to, to obviously tell me something about this game. You, you're, you're there to present the story. And like initially, I was like, you know, these, these are pretty nice visuals. I kind of, I kind of like this theme, this kind of like King Forty's theme under the water. It, it, it's not that bad. I don't think it's that like the. It's, I think it's pretty neat. I think that the way that a lot of people played the game, this is how I felt when I played the game, mm -hmm. was under the water. Like, you oh got God! To see, now you got to see life underwater you know you got to kind of see a world that you normally don't explore like a lot of the times people take that as space which we have that in dead space obviously where you feel trapped and alone but you get to see underwater like a lot of people are like oh it's just the sea whatever but there's still a lot of the sea we haven't explored and we haven't seen which is kind of what brings that element in where you're like Okay, this is kind of cool, because the atmosphere to this game is very unique and very cool. So I think that's where a lot of people are like, oh, I'm feeling trapped underwater. There's not a way that I can just bust out of here and be safe. Yeah. You know? And I think that's where a lot of that good things come from, and I'm going to talk to that as soon as you kind of get into it, but I feel like that's kind of what bought its way into everybody's household and everybody's, yeah. you know, liking the game. So, all you, guy. I don't have any, um, I guess, breakdown of characters. Yeah, you, play, no... you play Mr. No Name, man. Yeah, you don't have a name. You, you play Parasite, um, which honestly, I thought they were actually going to develop him as a character, like, as a, as a full person. I mean, but there's a reason, mm -hmm. and I get it. But, like... It's a pretty clever way of writing around that. Yeah. Um, I thought that when they when he honestly crashed crashed from the plane, I was like, oh, because he's like, man, I can't wait to get back home. Yeah. And then fucking nope, he, he crash, boom, and he's like, oh man, I, I want to go home. Yeah. Um, I thought it was all right. So, the only characters that we really need to go into are yourself, which isn't really that important. We'll Andrew and Ryan. And, what did I call him? Ryan Andrews. What the you, fuck? You started saying Ann Rand. Oh, I can't think I, right It was now. pretty clever, though. <laughs> Ayn Rand, and then it's Ryan Andrews. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> go on. No, it's a schedule. Um, Andrew Ryan. I like him. He's, he's cool. God, I feel so stupid now. Ayn Rand. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think I know what the fuck people were talking about when it was a political commentary and kind of things how, how they were. Because it didn't hit me till after the twist when I actually thought about what yeah. the fuck was happening. Which is kind of I was I... like, okay, no. Now taking into account all the dialogue that has been taken up to this point, I get it. And that's... Because before that, I was just disregarding it as... You're part of the Rebel Alliance. Take out Mr. Batman. Yeah, right. Like, which, is, great. which is kind of what I really do like about this game because a lot of the times you're just like, oh, okay, all I'm here to do is to try and escape. And then once you get to that twist, that's when the game changes. That's when you're like, oh, shit. And that's when you play the game a second time. And that's when you kind of pay more attention. And that's when you kind of pick up on the clues. And that's kind of when you pick up... So it's a nice way to get you to play the game again. Yeah, I think I think a lot of the things. I, don't, um, I, I initially played without subtitles because they weren't just default. Yeah. So I think I lost a lot of the dialogue. Yeah. Um, especially when it was Grumbly Man at Fontaine Fisheries. <laughs> I, I was like, what the fuck which I do believe you can go back and re-listen to them and they've gotten them written. But well, I was like, fuck, he's, I'm not sitting there in backlogs fucking doing it. Well, no. I mean, I like, I heard some shit and was like, 
Uh, those sound like words. And yeah, I'm on. Right. I, I kind of made it a habit. The second I open the game, immediately turn on subtitles. Well, that's usually default, though. That's well, not weird. usually. Not usually. Not in newer games. games. Yeah, in the newer games, no. this is back when Xbox 360 first came out. So they didn't really know what people were looking for and how to react and how to do things. So I've always made it a habit to always turn on subtitles. I like subtitles on everything, on TV, on video games. It just helps bring that. I, if it's a movie, like uh, an American-made movie or a TV show, I usually don't. Oh, I because, don't because for me, it's it's all about the delivery, and I don't want to read it and expect something different. I want, I want to be like... This. this is exactly their delivery on that situation, and I think that should be immediately made clear. Which is a good way to look at it. However, that same claim can't be made across cultural boundaries like anime or something like that, which right. honestly I think is a thing. But it's like, why don't you watch dubs? Because dubs rewrite characters. Yeah. Um, Sometimes. I just, I, they... Oh, I'll get into that later. That's just, that's just a discussion for another fucking day. Anyway, so the main characters you need to focus on are yourself, Andrew Ryan... Which, and Atlas! And Atlas, also known as... We're, okay. we're going to talk no, about okay. Frank Fontaine, which you kind of know that Andrew Ryan is the creator of this city. You, the main, s- you spend a lot of time actually finding out who Fontaine is. Right. Kind of. Like, well, like, the, the main thing is, is that Andrew Ryan is the creator of the city, and he wanted to kind of get away from religion and laws and general ideas of what is normal. I don't remember what the what the this the idea, the social idea is, but I, I'm pretty sure it's more elaborated in Atlas Shrugged, which I couldn't begin to tell you what the fuck it's about. Basically it's just he wanted everybody to He essentially to have... wanted man to create their own destiny. Right. To, for man to be you you to progress your own further ideals under the guise of no fucking restrictive control. Right. He wanted to if I'm getting that wrong, you could fucking... No, no, no. It, that's basically the main idea. He wanted to create a place that where you could do what you want without being judged. Everything you do... I mean, you're not... Obviously, you're not a fucking raping bitch. Well, no. But, you, like, but, like, scientific experiments, and which you do see with the little sisters, and things like that. The plasmids, and these are the things that cause the society to crash. Which you kind of learn that in its own kind of sick, twisted way that the laws are there for a reason. Because he created a world where nothing was off limits. Nothing. And it collapsed their whole society. The entire, the plasmids ruined everything. Because then everybody wanted the plasmids. Plasmids were power. Adam was power. And so you and wanted it's a it. It's complete power control. Like a right. power hungry thing. I mean, and probably Atlas Shrugged, it's probably a bit bigger story. It's, it's just more in depth rather right. than just superpowers yeah you know a little bit different well they are but yeah i, I don't know i haven't read atlas shrugged for to my knowledge i only know one person who's actually read atlas shrugged and that's brain and um yeah good luck <laughs> no I, I just i don't know i'd rather read the book myself yeah than talk to brain when he explains so. it like, brain brain uh, there's been a few times where brain hasn't really explained something very well and i'm just like Oh. Or he explains it in the complete opposite. Yeah. And so I'd, I'd rather not. Anyway, and then there's Atlas slash Frank Fontaine. Now you find out Andrew Ryan and Frank Fontaine are basically rivals with one another. Frank Fontaine was somebody who collected a lot of this atom and had that power. He was trying to be an underground kind of like mob, boss. The mob boss, essentially. Right. And he wanted to take the city from Andrew Ryan. Ideally. Ideally, yeah. Well, like, that wasn't his original plan, but that's kind of what ended up happening anyway. But, so you kind of find out, like, Atlas was this person that's gotten you through the city, and turns out it's Frank Fontaine trying to get what he wants. No, and that, that's pretty neat, because I was like, the only thing that gave it away, kind of, was that there was a level select for the bathosphere. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh shit, there's more fucking game. After Andrew Ryan's death, like, because it's just like, here's the part where Andrew Ryan's coming up. Uh, the bathosphere has clearly three more slots. I don't think they used them all, though. I think they only used two more. Yeah, they had, like, two empty spaces, I yeah. think. But, like, that would honestly lead me to believe that there's more games. So it's yeah. just, like, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird thing, like, because 
you have to actually think about these things rather than just push them off the fucking table and say, oh no, that didn't happen. Yeah. Which upsets me. But So, let's get into gameplay for you. We didn't really talk about Andrew Ryan. Or we just said that they exist. Well, and, and I did. Andrew Ryan, Andrew Ryan, I think I like is his fucking Walt Disney-esque style. You know, I think he was designed off him. I don't well. doubt it. And I think it was because of... Um, because of his nice demeanor yeah about it i do believe he was designed after walt disney and how he created like disneyland and it's, kind of created it's his own so land. weird that his his character was almost based on this don't like, quote me though because i don't know but that's what i get from he, it it's this weird fucking thing where he i don't get it i, I just don't get it like how, how, his, how his personality works because, like, yeah, he created Rapture, he had these ideals about him. But, like, literally, he was so uh, frustrated and upset. He's like, ah, bah, bah, bah. And, and, like, fucking upset. And he's like, you may crush my physical defenses, but my mental barriers will still fucking come up. And then by the end, when you meet him, he's all, like, he's calm. Crazy. He's calm. Yeah. He's like, all right, well. And he exposes the lie that's been presented to you for this entire time. Which is weird, because why wouldn't... Should I talk about that? What? Is that ending or is that just story? It's not the ending, it's story. <sighs> the ending is something completely different. If he could use his the mind control power as much as Atlas could or Fountain could, yeah. why the fuck didn't why wasn't it just like a, a pointing match? Because Like um, why why the fuck did like he go, would you kindly not kill me? But did you see well, there's no hierarchy. Yeah. There's no established no, no, hierarchy no. of how this mind Do you remember works. how um, you picked up that um, recording that's like, I don't get how the um, Big Daddy's imprint on the Little Sisters and he smacks her and then he kills her? I think it works the same way as that. I think the would you kindly would, when, when it's presented, but I think it is more prominent to Frank than it is to Andrew because when... Um, um, Andrew Ryan uses it, he doesn't say would you kindly at all. You know what I mean? I think there was why, an underlying... Why wasn't there like right on the radio? Would you kindly stop that? Well, because <laughs> he wasn't doing anything besides proving a point. You know what I mean? Like, Atlas can constantly hear you because when in that conversation, he's like, I'm sure you can hear me, Atlas. Do you hear me? Actually, another character I did want to mention. Sander Cohen. Hold on. Okay. Well, there is Tannenbaum, too. Yeah, actually, I did want to mention her and then uh, Plant Girl. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the way it works. They don't really indefinitely say, but I think that's how it works. But I think that um, I do remember that a lot of the, which again, a lot of that little small info is in those recordings. And honestly, like, it wasn't like these recordings were out of the way, like Tomb Raider. Well, these, these kind of were. There they were, were some. They were a long your way from a good portion of them. Yeah. Like Tomb Raider had them somewhat beside you so that you would pick them up. Because yeah. they shine just as much as every other object, and yeah. like literally, you didn't know what the fuck every reload clip looked like, so you just started picking up everything. Yeah. Tomb Raider, it's different, just because you're yeah. Never, I don't like, know. and I think that that was another interesting aspect of the game is because you're kind of trying to learn about this society. There's more to learn about this than Tomb Raider. With Tomb Raiders, you can just say. They're crazy islanders. Right. And then be done with your life. I think this was a game that was on the opposite of the spectrum, where they had tons of stories. It was an eclectic world that needed exploring. Right. And not so much... It's called world building. Yeah. Which is what it needed, which is what I think a lot of people gravitated to. It was not a world that was explored very often. Although we've seen that backfire in um, a certain movie we were watching where you may... Um, Friend, somebody no longer. Oh God, fuck you! <laughs> and uh, it needed to explore that world, and there were people, and there were lives, and there were. So while you're collecting these things, you're learning about before, you're learning as, and you're learning after. I think I think we can discuss uh, the characters that the characters that we missed in like gameplay because they're bosses. Yeah. Well, no tender bomb. Well, yeah. Um, uh, there's Reverse Poison Ivy who helps you. Yeah. I'm not fucking kidding, because she's like, I developed all my life making pesticides. 
and then and, and then she's like, I'm going to bring Bang back from the dead. It's like cool. Mm-hmm. And then she dies. Yep. And then Surgeon Man. Yeah. Which is a viable thing. Like I, I love it. He's one of the best bosses in this game. Not for gameplay wise, but character wise. Because I really enjoy him because you kind of see I feel like that's more predictable to me. Really? Because to me, to me, I think I've seen that or thought about that quite often. Enough that it's a prevalent thought that, like, you know, I know a cosmetic surgeon would go crazy with this shit. Because I'm pretty sure I've seen this in other fucking things. Yeah. Um, well, he, yeah, that is there's, a common there's, trope with that. It, it's but, not. It's not like, like I said, I I hate using the word original because there's probably going to be some nerd like, actually, that happened in the 1942 uh, esoteric flick from Spain called uh, My Brother's Dick My Ass. But, like, obviously, you know, I don't think it's it's obviously like, oh, yes, it's amazing. To me, it didn't really surprise me. I was just like, I'm glad that you you put that in there. That's a, that's a, nice, that's a nice thing that you did there. This is I what like I it. like about it, is that he does reach that part where you're like, oh, he goes crazy. But... In a, war, in, in, in a place where it was accepted, they didn't care. They didn't care at all. You went to him to get those things done. That's why everybody looks even fucked up worse than they did. Because he was... That's what they went to. They were like, oh, fix my face, make me look pretty, I'll do this. And he went far beyond that. Because he's like, mm, but I want art. Yeah, that I didn't really. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, sure, it's art, sure. Yeah. Well, like, he's just like, yes, an angel came to me. He's like, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's less personal fucking influence rather than fucking dementia or fucking whatever. Yeah. And the thing is, is that you can get, it's, I think it's like some studies have actually shown that if you don't get sun, you can actually go crazy. So oh. that might also be a thing. Right, yeah. With this entire sun thing I'm going to see. Um, whatever. Uh, reverse poison ivy uh, existed, I guess. Yeah. Um, Which she helped reset all of the oxygen. Mm-hmm. I um, I was fine with fucking uh, <laughs> Tenenbaum. Tenenbaum was okay. Tenenbaum was very interesting. She can go either way depending on what you do. I just, I was like, well, I'm not a, gonna be a big dick and just be like, well, I'm power hungry, so I'm gonna fucking kill these little girls. I was just like, right. I'll rescue him. Yeah. Which the fucking hilarious thing about gameplay wise of the, the the little girl and sisters is that you just palm these fucking like five year olds. They're like their fucking body is like three fourths of the width of your hand. I'm like, that is completely not how that no. works. And I'm just like, wow, they're not fucking basketball. And you're just like, eh. <laughs> see, the only, do you want to know why I chose to save them? It's because you can get all of the plasmids anyway. It's the only reason I say it, but I was like, I want to make this game as easy as possible on my first time through. I usually play the good. I actually skipped them. For, I actually skipped killing the big daddies after a while. Yeah, I know. Because they're passive. Why? Because you're supposed to save the little sisters. Do no, no, I know. I like. I just. I did it once, and I was like, okay. Yeah. But then, then, I was like, uh, I started seeing that the big daddies started killing the fucking people, the, the people for me, and I was like. Why should I fucking kill them? They're helping me. Yeah. This is awesome, and they're not doing anything to me. Right. Uh, like, oh, Jesus, fucking cool. And that's all I had. I was like, cool. Well, it's just supposed to be like you're it's supposed to be a good person and save the people. Like, mm-hmm. you're only imprinted on them to protect them because they collect atoms for people. Yeah. And you're supposed to be like, oh, that's not right. They're little girls. We have to save them. I think in the gameplay aspect, it's just kind of more just shooter. Yeah. Uh, you're 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 gathering resources, gathering a whole bunch of buffet pile of shit. Yeah. Oh, there's a rubber hose. There's a there's a monkey wrench. There's a dick. Uh, there's an organ. Uh, pull that shit together. Make an RPG. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh uh-huh. uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. And then like the plasmids are essentially your alternative to. It's like your mana for spells. Yeah. That's all it is. Like you're just mana spelling. Like yay. And you can buy better spells by. Harvesting little sisters. Yeah. Cool. Um, We're saving them. Nah, I'm doing that. Whatever. Um, what's something we forgetting? Oh, grumbly old fishery man. What was his deal? I literally uh, couldn't hear most of his shit, and I was like, I'm not. He was just crazy. 
He's just like, I, I don't, I don't care much for Fontaine. You smell like Fontaine. Are you yeah. Fontaine? No, I'm obviously not Fontaine. Fontaine was clear dead. Well, they know, they don't know who Fontaine is. That's why he was so elusive. Oh. They had no idea who he was. Oh. He was just an enigma behind everything. They knew he existed. I thought people had actually seen him. That was weird. But do you remember when he tells you, oh, I've been 50 different things? Because nobody knows what he is. Okay, that's completely fair. I thought it was just like... I thought when he said he's been 50 different things, is this has been going on for a while, he's well, just yeah. been shot and killed, that he's been into the, the, the reactive respawn chamber. Oh, no. I thought that was actually incorporated into it. It's like, you know, that's pretty cool. Nope. You know, I thought that would, that would actually be cool. That, no, no, he's just, um, okay. Yep. He's just, ugh, sorry. He's just elusive and, and a, and a right. name. He owned Fontaine Fishery. Yes, exactly. No, that's it. Like, whatever. Um, Alexander Cohen, a lot, actually. Because he silences all Andrew Ryan, all Atlas dumb bullshit. And he's just like, I like art. He's like, I, I'm a fucking crazed artist. But you know what? I'm not here to kill you, man. I just want you to help me correct some things in my domain. And I'm like, cool. I'm fine with that. Like, this... That was that was completely railroading. I was like, Whoa, I like this. I like this a lot. I felt I felt actually kind of joyous about that because I kind of liked his thing. I'm not saying this is original. They're fucking anything. I'll never. Yeah. You'll never. Probably never hear me use that. And if you do, call me out on it. But I do enjoy this. I do enjoy that fucking that fucking amazing thing. I, I think it's fucking wondrous. Just the, an artist going crazy, and the fact that he he's not there to kill you. He's not going crazy like, oh, I'm gonna fucking stab you if you even come near me. Like, he's like, yeah, no, seriously, I'll do that. And he even had criticisms in the paper, criticizing other people's art. And I'm like, cool. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, go kill these other people. Um, and then you end up going anyway, but... I didn't. Oh, yeah, okay, I guess you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have, he just like, he comes out, Ah, oh, cool, it's pretty nice. Now get out. I'm like, cool, he's like, kind of a bit bipolar or whatever. Like, whatever, fucking. But I'm like, all right, cool. I was fine with it. Yeah. I obviously wasn't going to lengthen the game for myself, so I didn't kill him. Yeah. That was, that was my entire thing. I liked him. Alexander Cohen, that was it. Like, I, there's not much to say. Not much that, that was flashed out, but I, I like him. I like that he wasn't like, oh, I'm going to fucking kill you. Uh, but he's just like, yep, just go kill, go cut off some loose ends, and we'll be fine. We'll be square, man. He gives you gifts. He's like, no, thanks for doing that. You want to do this? Maybe this will help you kill the other guy. And then he, after that, you're like, yo, uh, let's go up to the next level and be like, let's go beat up Andrew Ryan with my big penis. And that's it. Like, this, this game. Uh, Fontaine being big bad guy. And they're like, they're like, this is the part where you don't turn back. This is the pot where you're, you're, you're a piece of shit and you, you go fight Fontaine in his super form. Yeah. And like, and that like, the thing is, is with the gameplay, they have this, this respawn feature where it would, where it would just essentially bring you back mm -hmm. and bring you to a Vita chamber and then go, oh, okay, here you go. And you would just start back where you were. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, go. And like it was a it was a neat way of incorporating a respond like a, a new way to respond or a reason to respond that was yeah. in canon and still happened in real time. I was like, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat, you know, to do whatever like that. When it came to Fontaine, they were like, no, cut the bullshit. You save right now, and you fucking reload and upload on all your shit. Yep. And then you go up the elevator and you fight boss fight, which his boss fight was actually more boss fighty than anyone else. Yeah. If anything, because everybody else is just like, I'm a regular guy with more health bar. Yeah. Which, this is where the problem comes in. Yeah, this is the, I, he didn't notice it until he actually came over and watched me play it. Well, no, I knew this happened. Okay. But it's just a pain in my ass that I hate to see. I had a huge fucking problem with this as a game. And I'm going to fucking lay it out. God damn it. I was actually trying for like a little while, like to actually like, oh man, uh, I better dodge, uh, I better heal myself, uh, 
until it hit me. Until it hit me when I tried actually attacking Big Daddy and, and coming back and, and, and like, um, and actually... Which I've used this before. And, and actually, like, um, fighting something and fighting, you know, these enemies and everything. Their health bar stays the same. So I was like, wait a second, hold on. And I look back, and yeah, your when you die, your transported respawn in real time. It, with no loading back to where you were right. or previous states. It's everything happened in real time. You, you, you're, you, everything, there's, it's not saved progress. The game just keeps running. So my fucking problem with it is that doesn't challenge me. You've given me no loss. It doesn't take away some, like, fucking my ammo or any of my items to respond me or your money. It, it doesn't... All it is is it's a minor inconvenience to walk the distance Not from your vitamin sheet. From, <laughs> from your I vitamin chamber. killed you. From your vita chamber. From your vita chamber to walking to your objective, that's it. You know what that is? That's a fucking... A, that's a fucking... Vacation. Yeah. That's all it is. You're just like, well, it's time to... Which I agree. Reload. A major problem. Now, the reason we talked about this a little bit ago, because I, I was watching you play it, and I was like, oh, that's why you... Which yeah, really irritates It's not me. a sense of loss. Not because it's not a sense of loss, but to me, time is the loss. Not because I'm trying to speed run it, but I don't want to sit here trying to keep doing the same shit over and over and over. I'd much rather just get it over with and move on. But as a skill, as a gameplay, you're not challenging the player to get better. You're challenging them to abuse the system and just right. go. Which, the reason I said I assume that this is a thing was because when this game came out, it was very... It was one of the launch titles for Xbox 360, and they were like, okay, well, we got to see what our system can do. So what I think they tried to do and fool everybody was... They used demo technology, which is keeping them in real time. Right. So they're like, oh, we want to make this game seem as seamless as possible. Because prior systems, there was loading times for areas and everything. So they're like, when you die, instead of resetting everything, which would have taken a loading screen... Instead, what they did was they flagged when you walked past a Vita chamber, and then when you died, they changed your X and Y coordinates back to the Vita chamber and, and gave you like out. half. Yeah, yeah. Just gave like you half health. Everything's back to normal. Right. So it made it look like the game was very seamless when you died. Now, the downside to that is exactly what happens. There is no permanent loss. You don't lose anything besides time, which to me is a very big time waster. That's why I didn't want to die in the game. But if I was doing something like a Big Daddy where I needed to do something like that, I would abuse it. Yeah. Because the, that you get that's using the tools of the game. And I can see why everybody completed this game now. Because you're not punished. Exactly. You're not fucking punished so every baby can pick up a controller and beat I know, this game. What I, I don't remember if there was something that changes with difficulty. Because I'm trying to think, and I think on the harder difficulties they did restore health. <laughs> But that's besides the point. The only thing that this 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 kind of shitty fucking element does is enable that everybody can play your game, which okay. But then again, it opens up to casual gamers, and to me, I'm not very open to casual gamers because gross. Um, but then again, it's just it's kind of one of those weird things. It's just like there are casual gamers and there are casual games, but I don't think casual gamers are a thing. I think that casual games exist. People who pick up a game play it, and then that's a game for them. Right. Gamers make it a lifestyle, which is a huge difference. It makes them a challenge. It's something that they want. It's a hobby. It's something they like. Yeah. They enjoy. They indulge in. A casual gamer, from every definition, is not, I don't believe, a gamer. I believe that is a, a person who has a game. Right. Like, playing fucking, uh, fucking Snake on your phone back in, like, Nokia days. Yeah. Is that is that a gamer to you? Is that what that fucking is? No, it's not. It's a dude fucking wasting time. Like, what, what do you want from me? Yeah. And that's, like, I mean, honestly, and, and to be all venomous and fucking spiteful, yeah. Fuck yeah, this is exactly why every fucking piece of shit baby has played this fucking game. Up until the last boss fight where they go, we're not going to use this mechanic anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, why? And it's just like, oh, well, that make the last boss battle too easy. And it's like... Oh, you don't think that made the rest of the game fucking easy, you piece of shit? Basically, yeah. I think that what really people were interested in was the plasmids, the story, and the environment. I think that's all this game was, 
And that's why it is one of my favorite games. Not because it revolutionized gameplay, not because it was challenging, not because it was difficult, but because you developed that world that I was interested in. It was a world that was interesting, and, and like, I don't think... I don't think it's the most spectacular thing. Like, I'm not gonna say, oh, that's the big reason. But by God, it's it's actually good. It's interesting. It got me a bit interested. In it. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's a hard thing to do. In all honesty, I don't. I don't think that's hard. But I do like the creative emblemness. This is it's the reason why I reach for far fantasy or science fiction when it comes to any book or any any type of setting because I like that. I enjoy that a lot more because that shows the writer you've taken a lot more care and consideration when you think to make a world rather than going everything you know about history is already pre-established we only have to establish the characters yeah well i like okay i mean that could like that off as kingdom hearts but you know we'll get into that another day yeah yeah um but like i think that that takes a lot more care into that system of writing that that's that's obviously you've taken the time to actually develop this thing and the entire thing with the plasmas of mind control being would you kindly that's a fucking amazing thing like it just, I lo- that to, to me, me to me like was the, so good that was very that smooth was segue. probably <laughs> one of the best things i've seen in a game in a long time not because it because was very- the cinematic made sense the fact that you had control taken away from you, and but you were still felt like you had control. You felt like you had control. So it was kind of like you felt brain or not well brainwashed in that sense. I, I once I once watched a, a Satch Bags video. I think he still has it. And he was talking about why a Bioshock movie wouldn't work. Yeah, because the player's choice was uh, was taken away. And I was like, okay. He I watched like a good portion of the video. And like, I don't think he tries to spoil it too much, but like, I I watched the video and like, uh, yeah, I watched the Bioshock video because I thought it was gonna be about the game and why I thought it would be like why video game movies don't work. Yeah. And what he was really talking about was like free choice, the choice to go down which path and take which way. And I'm like, that's a fair option, except that you can still develop the story. Right. But now that I've actually played the game, it makes much more sense to use Bioshock as his leading argument, because that whole thing is about free choice right. and free will I think versus that, doing commands because well, you're told. I think that if this was not a game and it was a movie instead, it would work because... Gamer. What? What? I mean, Gamer's a shitty movie, but Gamer. <laughs> that, um, that it was... That we all know that it's a brainwash, but like if you took away those, because the only really difference is between the game is saving the little sisters or not saving the little sisters. That's I it. think I think the only thing that makes this excusable as a writing tool is the fact that he's a no-name hero. You yeah. can't cast a role in this. You can't. You'd have to make the entire movie fucking first person, which they do have hardcore Henry coming out, which uh, which is a movie probably gonna be out you know whatever but it's it's a first person action movie yeah and he plays a silent protagonist it's a gopro oh yeah they've done that though before but in a good way yeah (laughs) but like you don't know if it's good yet (laughs) thing i'm going to exact i'm going to preemptively guess that it is going to be fucking amazing as an action movie because it looks amazing as an action it would be cool but the thing is, is that in this in this entire environment as a writing tool, you've used the concept of a video game, you being a first-person nameless Joe guy, as as a tool to to further your 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 political kind of your your discussion, your amazing discussion about free will and choice and and, yeah. and whether you are free. Now, I'm not going to be an edgelord fucking piece of shit who, like, oh, we'll eat, sleep, pray, go to work, it's, man, it's all the government controlling what you do. Yeah, fuck off, okay? This is about actual philosophical free will, not things you have to do to pr- actually pursue and live a life in society, you fuck. Um, but, I mean, like, this is the choice of free will. This is the choice of you being able to, to make your choices in life. Do you make them... 
or to somebody else. Does somebody else? Do you do it because somebody tells you, or is it because you're emotionally inclined to do what somebody tells you because you want to? Right. It's this entire thing of free will that I like as discussion on. I enjoy this, and I think that the, this entire narrative has a very good time to make it a. Um, writing tool and to create a discussion as a game yeah as a game you can't make this a movie i don't think i don't know how the other bioshocks fare but if this is if this is the standard i think this is great however i do know that sequel shittiness happens is that um, i don't remember I, I haven't played two in a long while but from what i understand two is a completely different type of uh, philosophy about it yeah it's it's more touring what happens like it's Bioshock is happening you know what I mean like um, it's the start it's not when you play this this is like after it's happened mm -hmm. two is during it's happening like when yeah. the entire thing collapses yeah and then three is something completely different three is airship adventure steampunk yeah. man uh, also I do if you if you ever I, I like giving these alternate titles but if you like your, if you like being a dickbag to other people, I do advise that you can just call it. Oh yes, I love my grim dark forties underwater adventure. Yeah. If you want to give it a dickbag title, go ahead. I think it's a pretty fun way to refer to it. Um, grim dark nineteen forties underwater adventure is my favorite thing. Or excursion. If you really want to be a dick. So, something that I liked about the PC version compared to a console version. Yes. Is that your weapon select screen was completely different. They had added some stuff to make it into a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, variety, like it's, you, you could choose all your weapons, you know, right. in that top bar. We would have to use a D-pad to do it. And I use scroll wheel. Right, exactly. I think that's a lot more handy than most PC gamers who are like, you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or you can go F1, F2, F3, F4 for your plasmids. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's it. I don't mind. Yeah. So, I, they I did add some different stuff, which is something that was different from Tomb Raider. Like, Tomb Raider was just cut and paste. Let's make it fit. You you had a, you had a disclaimer about the discrepancy about the gameplay comparison on why demo-wise. What do you mean? You, were, you brought it up in Tomb Raider. You said, like, I'll talk about it when it comes to your game. And it That's was it. it was talking about porting. And the right. thing is, is that I, I'm not fully in the aspect of porting. Actually, I was actually getting around to watching the Game Ranks video about porting and why it's a problem or why their excuses or like why these excuses don't make sense. I, I think it's really weird that we program them all on a computer and then go, yeah, but it doesn't really work well in computer. I just don't understand that concept. But, you know, maybe somebody can actually explain that to me. I mean, yeah, even being in the computer science field, I don't understand that. When you develop something for a, a computer, how do you not chop it up, butcher it from PC to down, going downward? Because, because PC is obviously more powerful. Right. I'm not going to sit here and say PC, Master Race, whatever, but like... The way it works is like when a game is made, yeah. they use the same kind of computer that we do, but a lot of the times they use a controller to twist test the game because their market is usually not PC unless the game is designed for PC and then ported to a console Bethesda games right Beth like literally just be Bethesda what does Bethesda make quality games like if you're gonna put the time in for the console version you should put time into your PC version too I think that you should develop PC first and then exactly. butcher it down because it's easier to take away than it is to add you should work on PC and then go to console. But sometimes, like, Bioshock was not available on a PC. It was Xbox only for a while. Yeah. And, and Microsoft's like, you should probably make no one. Right. And you own PC. What the fuck? Anyway. And they only made it for the Xbox One. Well, they want to make something. Or the Xbox 360. Sorry. Yeah, 360. Yeah. And that's kind of what they used to sell the Xbox 360, though, so I can kind of see why. But... Like, games like the Tomb Raider, like your weapon, you only had four weapons. You had a bow, you had a handgun, you had a shotgun, you had a machine gun. And they were in a triangle pattern, or not triangle, diamond pattern. When you could tell where you would use the, the D-pad to select whichever weapon. You didn't get that option on the PC. You either had to scroll or you had to know the number to which gun you wanted. 
Which, yeah, it's effectively the same thing, but you can kind of see where kind of... Lots of quick time events, you know? Yeah, that too. I, like, I think the PC porting thing is, is just weird. It's just like, I think that you, it's weird. Also, another gameplay thing I noticed, uh, it's more of a graphic design right around. I don't know if this is initially planned, uh -huh. but I, I feel like it is. They obviously made everyone gross abominations because they probably didn't perfect skin textures and how they look. Because when they made the little sisters real, real people, yeah. their faces look gross. Andrew Ryan looked gross. Andrew Ryan looked passable, actually. I don't, I, like, passable. That's why I said passable. Mm. Literally, the fucking, like, little sister's face, like, you look so much more cartoony. Yeah. But Andrew Ryan looks trying to be realistic. Yeah. That's the difference. That's a major fucking yeah. difference. It's just like, wow, this looks really weird. Yeah, and it kind of worked but with like, their story, so... Well, it worked with their graphical settings, really. Yeah. Not their fucking story, but... Well, like, it did work with their story. The, story the little sister is supposed to look normal. Yeah, the little sister did not. Yeah, that looked like a fucking toy. But the splicers look normal. Yeah, no, that's fine. Like, well, how the... Well, not normal, but I don't, the story normal. I just like the PC porting it is just really weird. Just like, I, why would you develop for... Con like, if you make a... Um... God damn, lost my train of thought. Uh, fuck, what was I talking about? <laughs> Your skin texture is a PC. Yeah, it's, so you it's make just a game for PC. If you make a, if you make a game for, um, for PC, why... If you make a game for console, yeah. why wouldn't you start at the top hierarchy of making it for PC first? Like, if you're going to make something multi-platform, why don't you sit in the start type top hierarchy of making it for PC first, right. and then butcher downwards? Yeah. You know, like, Ryan, uh, fucking, it's only, uh, uh, I used to game with, and I, I, the rest of the gaming group does, I just kind of fell up from that gaming group, Yeah. was, um, he played PC games all the time, and he played Skyrim in its PC form. Yeah. He didn't play console. We were playing console, and he's like, what the fuck is this? He wasn't complaining about graphics. I mean, obviously that's a point thing he pointed out, but he wasn't going to be like, yo, graphics whore, you know, whatever. Yeah. But one of the things he pointed out was the AI was butchered. Yeah. Like, by God, one of the things that he used as a good comparison is that in the piece, in the game version, you can just walk up and smash a deer with a hammer in Skyrim. Uh -huh. You can just do that. You run, bam, smash him. The thing with the detection on the deer in fucking Skyrim on PC uh -huh. is if they're remotely, if you can like squint and see that that maybe is a deer form, if you don't fucking sneak, it runs. Wow. It's off. It's fucking out. And I'm like, that is damn good. That, that, like, that, that should be your butcher down. Because, like, you should always butcher down for consoles. Like, the thing is, is that I don't care when people say, like, oh, well, PC is a, a superior thing. It is. Holy shit. You have a much more viable option that people will put, obviously customize and build to max out well, not only that. for these visuals, for these gameplay, for the processing. Not something that's made on something that's pre-established, probably year-old technology by the time the console comes out. Right. A console is a computer. It's just outdated. It's all it's outdated like massively by the time it actually can make its stores. Right. Because they have to pre-test it, pre-build it, and they have to go, hey developers, can you create some launch titles? So for about like the developers have it for about a year and a half or two years to go, I need to make some games. So at best you're playing on like something that's like three or four years old. Yeah. And totally. and like when it when it comes to making games, I feel like you should butcher downwards. Yeah. I don't know if that's a fucking term or not, but butcher downwards. Don't fucking make a game and then so what can we add for PC players? I don't know, shut up those polygons fun bitch. Right? Like Well like what's really funny to me is a lot of the times when a game comes on a console first and then they release it for a PC, the only thing that they really change is how it looks. That's it. And you're like, why don't you just like change the format or the way it looks like functionality wise but you don't but Bioshock did it and that's what I like what I kind of like what they did with the Ghostbusters game and I'll, I'll, I'll go into I'll like make a short tangent is the Ghostbusters game they developed two different versions yeah one for obviously inferior type kind of consoles uh, they did one for PlayStation uh, 2 they did one for Wii and they came to use the same cartoony style for the DS one, which the DS one is similar to the NES version. Yeah. 
but they did that and they changed the script around and changed gameplay elements. Yeah. One of the major things about the fucking cartoony ones is you can do co-op. Yeah. Split screen co-op. The main one for the all the gritty ones, which is PS3, 360, and PC, is that when you play it, you have it's gritty, realistic. It's actually their facial depictions. It's it's you feel like they're real. They're not cartoony. They right. they're the the gameplay obviously changes. There's a lot more expanse to it. And like that is an example of what you should do as PC comparative to consoles. Yeah. It's a much grander like actual slant or, or curve curvature. Yeah. But like the thing is is that you you make something I'm not saying you have to be drastically fucking different, but you do have to obviously go for here's what a PC should have. What con what things can we take out without sacrificing actual gameplay to put it on console? Right. What what can we do? Cut down those poly polygon costs. They cost too much. What what can we do to do this? Uh, take out that hey, CPU, the AI. Not that hard. You know, you know control paste some AI for some of those other ones, those other monsters. Yeah. Or whatever. And, and honestly, people fucking love Skyrim. Yeah. Is it inferior to the PC version? Very much. So. Yeah, very much so. But the thing is, is, people fucking love the goddamn console version because you know people were controlling monkeys at that time and era. People are getting more and more slanted toward PC era these days. Yeah. I can only say that because I just decided to make a leap. Yeah. For me, that's weird. Um, but like, holy shit, it, it's getting more and more that it's becoming more PC prevalent. Yeah. PC had its own fucking E3 spotlight. Yeah. And that's that's something to be proud of. That's something that you should cherish. Well, and all, not only that, but I do believe I did see an announcement. I don't know if it's true, and I don't know if I have 100% of the facts, but the next um, Xbox device or console is going to be also a PC. Like, what do you mean? Like, it's going to, they're not going to, like, it's going to be half computer, half console, I believe. Like something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah, something like that. But it's like I don't know. It like instead of being Xbox 360 is different or Xbox One is different from our PCs. Now it's gonna be together, I believe. I I'm not quite sure like, I understand what you mean. Developers are going to develop it for the next Xbox console, but it's part of a PC. Okay. So instead of being like, this is a game that's going to be on um, Xbox Books only, and the only way you can get it is Xbox One. Instead of, and, and now it's going to be like an Xbox console with your PC. I oh, the Windows 10 streaming? No, it's something okay. else. I don't 100% know. I'll look more into the details, or we'll look into more into the details to kind of I think I think we're tangenting off a lot of, of what we're criticizing but between Bioshock, and I think that's a comparison, but I don't think that should hold back the game as a whole, because you should obviously criticize what you, you played, not what you didn't play in a comparison to what other people's played. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's a thing, but, like, in all honesty, I don't think that the, the respawn thing is, is a very good gameplay design. No. And honestly, for me, as a game, the thing that you're supposed to interact with as a game... Not a fucking kinetic novel. It fails as a game because of that. Yeah. Not completely, not wholesomely, but because of that stupid fucking respawn feature. Well, it doesn't ruin the whole game. That's no. What you're saying. No, 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 no. I, I, it's just to it, be it, fair. It, it's just it degrades it yeah. as a game. There you go. That's a better word. It demeans it. it it's demoralizing. It's fucking. It's insulting. It, it doesn't benefit anybody. It just hurts. Just. Bring me back to a checkpoint. Just do that. Why couldn't you just do that? Well, because it's a loading screen. Don't care. But well, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I understand. That's... I understand. But like, you, you're, you're trying to create essentially demo tech in a game, and I'm like, cool. That's cool. But then again, this demo is not fairly implemented. If you just took away ammo, that's all you had to do. Take away ammo. Yeah. I don't care that you respawn half my health. Where you spawn everything? Take away ammo. Take away ammo. Take away ammo. Ammo. Take away ammo. Take away some of your items that you use for the U invent. Like have a sacrifice. Yeah. Without sacrifice, without without. Well, not a sacrifice. Loss. A loss. We've Thank learned. You. We've learned today. Thank you, Tomb Raider. Thank Thanks, you. Tomb Raider. <laughs> Hashtag squares. Squares. Get out. Get out. No, uh, no, no. It's a pound sign. We've been over this. There's a different name for it. I don't remember what the actual technical term is. I don't remember. Um, no, but it's just, it, it, you don't have a sense of sacrifice or sense of, of, of 
like loss. Yeah, I agree. You, you, you just, all right, I have to walk down the hallway again. Yep. So that's where my problems lie with that. That as a game design, you just you have sucked dick. Everything else you've done amazingly. You've done amazing writing portrayal of what free will and free choice is. We've are, we've obviously had a discussion. We went very in depth with that. And the thing is, that's amazing. That's what you can do to blow people away. But a game, no, no, no. I don't. I don't agree that you. You're, you're, this was a good choice for you. No. If, if everything, you, you know, it wasn't a good choice, and the thing was is that you... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, a big question you could just make as a plot hole is why why don't other people get into the chamber? Yeah, that's what's another one. Like, what, why the fuck you? What, what I mean, in game and, and in game design, what the fuck brings your body which disappears, your ammo, your ammunitions, your possessions, everything else, your memories, everything. What links you back to this like, thing? I remember that- You're not developing the mechanic of it enough, like story-wise, you're developing everything else. Yeah. But why the fuck there's a fighter chamber, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the fighter chamber kind of blows a hole in everything, but I do remember- Because why didn't Andrew- about it earlier. Why didn't Andrew Ryan respond? Well, why didn't Fontaine? Because you hit him in the head. I'm sure you've been hit in the head, blown to no, bits, uh, and fucking. They cut your chest. I saw. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, they bleed. I bled. I bled from scabbing. Uh, yeah. I'm dying from scabbing. Oh god. No, I just I I think that that's a major holdback on its part of being a game. Yeah. As a writing here, yeah, I just I don't fucking agree with that. Like that's a, that's a t poor choice. I believe that you you fucked up in that sense, but you've made a good game. In the, uh, you've made a good and interesting story, a uh, sense of character, realism, and, and essentially something to envelop yourself in. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah. I know that most people probably wanted me to be really fucking harsh or like hate the shit out of this game, but like, I, I don't see this as a, I don't think this is really that bad. Yeah. I don't really. I, like, it's not bad, it's good. And I'd honestly say, like, I think we've, we've already discussed our further achievements and criticisms of it. You know, I just think that that game aspect of not really being a game because you don't suffer a sense of loss is, is almost, it's dumb, because death is arbitrary. If you don't make death mean something, it's dumb. We've yeah. talked enough about it that it, it just becomes this invasive thing into the game design. Yeah. And you can like the game, you can sure as hell do that, but know this, it's not really that much of a game if you don't have loss, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, it's not really a challenge at all. Something should always, a game should challenge you. I mean, like, what's the point, like, if you honestly look at sports and go, like, like you have one person on the team, like, let's say it's a gym class and you have that one kid who goes, I don't really care, and he just kind of like throws the football, but like really haphazardly. Like I we don't it. talk about that kid. Yeah, we don't fucking talk about that kid. But he obviously sees it as like, what's the fucking point? You're you're graded on your effort, but like you know what? There's no great grading scale for how effort is graded, so you know fuck that. But it's just, it's just this weird comparison. It's just like you can make is that like you're not essentially trying. There's a challenge. You, you still want to play and have fun. But when you're not challenged, there's no point. There's no point at all. So, how do you feel overall? I feel that it was a good enough game to actually promise a discussion. I think it's, it's very good in its action presentation. It's, it's, it's shots, it's how it uses writing narrative. I think it's fucking clever as shit. I honestly fucking adore it. I adore it for those very reasons. Yay! However, as a game, I can't give it that satisfaction of giving it a big score. I can't be like 10 out of 10, best game ever. No. I can see that the justification for having all these people uh, have, make even college humor, making a fucking uh, a cartoon about it, you know, whatever. There, there's all these fucking things, and it just... Um, and, you know, college humor only plays a game if they can beat it, so, you know, whatever. That tells you something. Uh, which obviously I can see why you can beat this game. Yeah. Um, but like in this in this praise, it's it, it gets its well-deserved praise because so many people can play this. A baby can. A baby can play the game. This is M-rated, sir. A baby can play the game. 
Um, I just, I don't know. I don't think it, like, I think it's it actually well-deserving of its praise for its writing and narrative. And I think it's amazing. As a game, though, I think that people should actually take away that it's not a good implemented, well-implemented game. Right. Because of that fact. Because of the basic core mechanic of no sense of loss. So, I mean, honestly, I'd give it a fucking, like, I want to say it's somewhere around a six to seven. Really? I would. I, I, or, like or, if that's you know the, what? Ooh. I think a. I think a seven or eight. Because that's what I was gonna say. Because because your only issue because there weren't. That is a things. huge fucking problem of being a game. Well, hold on. Let me explain. You cut me off again. Okay. Um, if your only issue is the vibe chamber, which yes, I have an issue with it. Of course I do. I don't want to sit there and make the game easy. Um, if that's the only issue, you didn't run into any bugs. You didn't run into anything that broke the game. No, for no, you. no. I know, but but glitches obviously happen in newer, newer games because right. you have to make complex, complex decisions. And I think, based on that merit, I would agree with you on the seven or eight. I would give it the eight, not just because you can't give it because the story is great. The way they delve into it is great. Everything is good the, about it. The thing except is, except for the Vita chambers, and they didn't change it. The thing is, is that the game works. The thing is, is that like. People wanting to be surprised in this game, I, I'm not saying you're gonna be surprised. Yeah. Like I can obviously see very reactionary people yeah. going, "Whoa, that's such a good." I, I was just sitting there. I was like, "Oh, that's pretty interesting." Yeah. Like I wasn't a big massive faggot and be like, blah, 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 blah. "I'm a. This is a good game." Yep, yep. Yeah, that's a. That's a good twist. To, you know. It I, was a good twist. It was a good twist. And it was like, it, but that it's not M Night Shyamalan twist. It's not like that's well, the only reason. It was good. It was, he made good movies at one point. Believe that. Mm. But yeah, I don't no. believe it now. But like the thing is, it's like it's a good way to present your idea. It's, it is the only way that this can be presented is in a game. But you fucked up on making the game part yeah. because of that, and and that's why I'd say somewhere around a seven or eight. Now the thing is, is that you, I, the reason why is just up to that part before the twist. I honestly was almost not giving a shit. I was not having fun. Because after I discovered that like it didn't really matter whether I died, I was like... Fucking <sighs> oh, Jesus. Because setting yeah, people on fire is burn damage. Yeah, and they, the way and you play, though, is so stupid. I was like, burn damage, he's gonna die. Um, uh, enemies endlessly don't. respawn. You I actually found that out. What? But, like, en enemies endlessly respawn. Uh, they do. Yeah. They actually... like. So I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty neat. But, like... Like, burn damage, uh, it's gonna keep damaging them. Alright, bye. But they and they don't. just, like, run. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. Burn damage keeps burning. But they always run to water, and that cuts them out. Not always. Well, usually. If there's a programmed AI around that area that says that there's water, yes, they do. Yeah. The doctor did, but you know what? There were plenty of times where I was in Fontaine Fisheries. The place that has fish, and you would just simply with water and be everywhere. There were well, waterfalls. There's ice everywhere in that one. No. There's water pouring from the ceiling and I set someone on fire. I was standing by the water waiting for them to get closer. And then I stepped back. The, the guy just sat there burning. He's like, oh my God, God. And then he starts pulling out his gun while on fire, being damaged. And he's like, I can't shoot him. What do I do? I'm like, go in the water. Go in the water. Go, go in the fucking water. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like literally you programmed the AI to actually go for water when it's on fire. Yeah. Cool. But you haven't programmed in the AI to just all the AI to do it, yeah. or you haven't programmed. Well, these are water have, spots. But I think that it wasn't very. Um, you, you haven't programmed water spots. The thing is, is these fire these waterfalls did put out water, didn't put out fires, but the AI just didn't do it. Yeah. Sometimes. And I'm don't. just like, it's so fucking weird. Why did you do this? Why is this not a priority? Why did? I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand. But th for that very reason, it's kind of like, that's a weird AI looking system. If you want to know how he plays, he literally runs up and just sets everybody on fire and lets himself die. Well, I mean, I was shooting, and I was like, oh, wow. But I wasn't, like, making it a last-ditch effort. Like, oh, I gotta make this shot count! But I was like, fire, 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 uh, evil. Uh, fire, 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 fire. Dead. Uh, gun. Except for half the time he didn't pull out a gun. Well, I did. You just didn't see when I pulled out guns. 
I, I did because I was like, whenever the game told me I couldn't pick up stuff because I was full on ammo, I was like, oh, I guess I better use that gun. Yeah, and I would just waste ammo just because I could pick up stuff. Um, no, I, I really think that this this game does deserve its credit. Is it? It's a lot of um. It's a lot of fucking like uh. So it's a lot of discussion that, that can always be raised from this very thing, and that's the thing is it's thought provoking and wondrous because of that. Now I don't like it because it's fucking edgy. I'm not a piece of shit like well, no. that. Because there are people that like it. Like, I like edge. Oh, it's pretty dark, and I'm like, hey, can, can you fuck off? You know, and and this is just a. They I, mean, kind I of bet you like Tim Burton movies too. Like, they tried to connect all these games from the third one. Yeah. Which, if anybody can figure out the fucking ending, someone please tell me, please. Because I've looked up the theories and I've looked up the the what it actually means. That does make no Nick sense. Nick blurted it out around me. Huh? I mean, I mean, Nick blurted it out around me. I mean, spoilers if you really give a shit. But he was like, "Oh no, it's great because they kill God," and I'm like, "Not really." I don't really care to go into discussion right about now or about because yeah, really I'm just like. Um, but it's cool because you kind of. Um, I guess in the replayability of it, like, if since there is alternate endings. I would. I would honestly play it again, if only for that that factor. Yeah. But then again, I'm well, like, then to listen to all the would you kindly's like I did. Yeah, because it, it's it's one of those things that bears repeating that you can watch again and be like, this is a newfound you know fucking interest and an exploration as you fucking rewatch the the entire thing. Yeah. It's kind of like what, some of those movies that make you do that, like um, Memento. Is, is a fucking is, is one that does the same thing. There's just all these weird fucking like low effective things that I think that you could do. Yeah. Um. So I think that's I think that's a fairly good uh go. This is seven eight. I I think that's a range. I can't say I'm on a teetering fact, and I don't like using decimals. It'd be like seven point five one two three four six eight two five. It gets six. a three point one four one five nine two six five. <laughs> Out of the scale of... Okay. Well, I don't... I, I used to be able to memorize up to 30 or 40 decimals. It's an E high. out of pi. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like... Well, it was a competition in uh, middle school. They're like, whoever can go the longest gets a prize. And I could do to 40, but somebody beat me. But I think like two. It's an E out of five. Yeah, it's an E out of pi. Yeah. E, is, <laughs> e is a great number. <laughs> It's like, pie makes sense. Pie. Someone actually explained to me what pie was. Like, where did we get E? Uh, Math school. Yo, we just came up with a magic number. <laughs> so? No, I think that's good. No. Um, so. So. I need a pulling thread. No. I'm not to follow. So. T. Is it a good job, Brad? Good job. Bye bye, sir. Back to you. Go, 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 go. Get away. Um. What should we do for next? I don't know. What do you want me to do? I swear to God. You know exactly. What I do do I? I? Oh, yes. I told you. No, actually, I don't remember. I want you to do Fuller House. I'm going to fucking kill you. And the reason why, and I've said this millions of times, is I was expecting this show to be exactly how Full S was. For it. Fucking kill you. Um, and I wanted to see what kind. Of, like I was expecting the same kind of problem from Full House into Fuller House, and that's not the way it worked. So I kind of want to because there are things that I like to discuss about it, and there are things that I would like to see your side on it. So that's what I want. I want to see that because I feel like that would be a great conversation for us to see. Because I do have my problems with it, and I do have good points. Oh! I forgot to mention something. What? Uh, the final boss fight with Fontaine reminded me of the first episode of the Red Jacket Lupin series. That was pretty good. Like, literally, I shit you not. I was like, holy god damn. Get out. It's fucking great. So what can I do for you, guy? What can you do for me? Well, I, I actually had... Fights I, make you look good by comparison. I had to make, I, I was actually thinking about making a few suggestions, and there were a few of them that I actually had laid out. Um, one of them was uh, Fate Zero, which is fucking fantastical, uh, uh, amazing fucking um, series that exists. 
And now I think I'm actually gonna go through and actually give it to you, just because it is an amazing what is fucking it? series. Oh, fuck you. Just I'm not doing this shit. This is just like school live, dumb shit. I'm not doing this. What do you mean? I don't like fucking doing these fucking things like, oh, what is it? What is it? I'm not gonna watch it unless you tell me what it is. Well, no, I just want to know what it is. It's anime. Okay, thank you. It's on the country roll. But like, that's what I needed to know. Um, like, um, it's actually an eclectic long series on the WWE. <laughs> And um, it's about their adventure to um, Philadelphia, and uh, it's gonna be a good show. You tell me what you think. I feel like I'm gonna die. That's what I think. Cancer. Like I just like um, we, we, it's a really, a really great series and eclectic thing. Now, however, I will preface it with this: Do not watch Rin's Big Adventure. That episode is not for you. It is not for fucking anyone except watching the previous series. The previous series is made after this one. It's set after this one, which is Fate Stay Night, was made before Fate Zero. Uh -huh. Fate Zero is a prequel series, but they decide to go, hey, what's this character that was in the sequel series doing at this moment? Oh, it turns out, nothing fucking good. So, do not fucking watch that okay. one. It is the worst. Stop yelling at me. God damn, it's disgusting. I'm a strong kind of woman who does not need to be yelled at. No, I mean it. Like, oh, God, it's fucking disgusting. But no, um, we can have a discussion on it. And I think it might actually start something else for the show. Uh, because it is fucking amazing and the lore is absolutely amazing. Okay. Um, other than that, uh... We didn't have John talk a lot. What? We didn't have John talk a lot. Johnny? I don't know, uh, I, I don't know if Johnny, if, if you've seen or played, actually, well, I know you've probably played Bioshock, maybe, maybe, I, maybe, I would assume. The Spanish version. <laughs> I think Andrew Ryan Hell is Bioshock. <laughs> I, think, I think Andrew Ryan in the Spanish accent would be fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> think about that. He looks, he looks like Walt Disney. Just think about him. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still reeling over my joke of L Bioshock. What are you saying? <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Have you played Bioshock or the new Tomb Raider reboot, Johnny? No, I have it on Steam, but never played any of them. I mean, he probably spoke in that same time. He just sound like a dick now. <laughs> Oh well, you are what you eat. All right, <laughs> all right. Um, did I tell you about um, Ring versus the Grudge? Oh, do you know that? Yeah, I heard about that. I don't know how to feel about this. How do you have two? Oh, we're months? just throwing in current events. You want me to fucking talk about Ghostbusters? No, I'm just. Oh, uh, I'm just saying. Oh, just what you like. Yeah. Thank you for finally realizing it's all about me. Thank you, sidekick. <laughs> You're just a dinsed in tears. <laughs> anyway. No, fucking Grudge vs. the Ring. Oh. We don't have to talk about it. I, I think it's a fucking it. weird ass fucking concept. How do you have two creatures that can't look at Pretty each other fight each other? It's weird that they could probably do it like Freddy vs. Jason, but you know. Ew. One of the things I heard about was a matchup was uh, Wishmaster vs. Leprechaun. Cool. I was like, that's weird. I like it. we're just going on on a tangent now. We should probably end this. Yeah, maybe. Uh, now it's time for so long. But Calvin's dumb and I'm just... My dick is long. No. Thanks for doing your part. Calvin sure is dumb. <laughs> but with me and Johnny... And my dumb Calvin, we can do anything that we want to do. Bye. Fuck you. <laughs> I would say something so mean right now, but you're lucky I fucking hate you. What? I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I'm mad at you right now. Don't talk to me. Why are you mad, Calvin? Because <laughs> you're dumb. No.
Nope, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. You wanna oh. say bye at least? No. Okay. Bye, Calvin. Uh, say bye, Johnny. Goodbye. Bye. 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 And bye. 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 bye.